good morning friends <coughs> Okay, uh, so today we're going to start with a new area. I'm going to start with an area called as mutual funds. Uh, broadly, initial 10-15 minutes of discussion to understand why this instrument at all exists, and then we get into finer areas as to what is covered in your material. Now, let's first understand what is this mutual fund all about. Uh, let's assume a person wants to file a tax return. So, if you want to file a tax return, you will go to maybe a chartered accountant or a person who specializes in having a knowledge of tax. You want to fight on a legal case. If you want to fight for a legal case, you will go to an advocate and he will take care of it. Uh, you have some health issues, you will go to a doctor and he takes care of it. So, for every uh, <coughs> requirement, there is a specialist who is available. Similarly, investment, investing money is also a specialized requirement. It is not so easy for everyone to invest money. If I tell you, if I give you 1 lakh and tell you that please invest in stock market, you will not be in a position to do it easily because you don't have that knowledge as of now. You may develop that knowledge over time, but still at this stage, if I tell you that you will have to invest 1 lakh in stock market, you will not be in a position to do it. Despite me teaching SFM for such a long time, I still don't invest directly in stock market because I don't have adequate knowledge in order to invest in stock markets directly. So, investing in a stock market or investing in any asset class needs some specialized knowledge. Without that specialized knowledge, if you are investing money, you may not get adequate returns which are expected out of an investment. Even for creating a fixed deposit, ideally there should be some knowledge which is needed. The knowledge which is needed could be limited. So, some of your parents or you yourself would have created a fixed deposit because the amount of knowledge needed to create a fixed deposit is not that high because you don't have so many variables in a FD creation. But you have a lot of variables in an equity investment. If you want to invest in an equity share or you want to invest in uh, <coughs> some hybrid kind of an instrument, you need good amount of knowledge. Whether Is it right to invest in TCS at this point of time? Is it right to invest in Infosys at this point of time? So taking that call needs a lot of knowledge and a lot of research. It's also research which is needed. Unfortunately, I as an individual investor do not have that flexibility to do so much research because I cannot spend so much amount of time in doing research on a company. I may not have that flexibility at my end. I also will not be in a position to track markets because investing also involves tracking on a daily basis or not on a daily basis, but at least at some periodicity, maybe every month or every quarter you want to review your holdings. Also, if results come in, quarterly results come in, you need to see how the quarterly results of the company has been. Is there any problem with the company? Should I sell the stock now or should I buy more? So technically, there is something called as a fundamental analysis and a technical analysis which needs to be in, which you learn in another chapter called a security analysis. But basic thing is before investing in a stock, I'm focusing more on equity, but mutual fund is not only related to equity, it is related to multiple things. But before I invest in a stock, I need to have that specialized knowledge. You need to have a knowledge of how Walters work, how Gordon's work, how FCFE work, how P multiple approach work and then arrive at a fair value of a share. Despite you learning theoretically, if I tell you to arrive at a fair value of a share, you are not going to find it so easier. It needs a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and a lot of assumptions needs to be taken for you to proceed taking a call on stock price or a fair stock price. If anybody can determine a fair stock price, then you can go ahead and invest in stock market. If you can determine a fair stock price, most of the times investments at this at today's stage, if I ask why are you investing in this company, it will go up. That's all. That's the only answer I'll get from people saying that it will go up. Why will it go up? Nobody has an answer to it. You talk to a friend, he'll say, please buy the stock. This will go up. When you ask the next question, there will not be a response coming from the other side. But you ask a mutual fund fund manager, ask him why are you buying the stock? He'll give you a rational for it. He'll give you a detailed rational for why is he doing this. So, a mutual fund is basically an instrument. It is an instrument which pools money of lot of people. So, you want 1 lakh to invest. There are 1000 people who want to invest 1 lakh rupee. When I pool this money together, I have 10 crore. Now, for 10 crore, I can afford to recruit one chartered accountant, let's assume, or one financial manager and tell him to do research. Because if I have to pay salary to this guy, when I have funds of 10 crore, I can afford to pay salary to a person saying that you please do full-time research. You please do full-time research on various companies, do tracking of various portfolio, and then let us know whether we can buy the stock or not. So, when I'm able to get 
work done for so many people because your mutual fund is going to pool money together it in fact manages funds like 10000 crore 20000 crore 30000 crore so it's going to pool money from so many people and manage this money together it is going to manage this money together when they do this when they are managing this money together for so many people they can afford to do lot of things which as an individual will not be able to do because most important part is doing research without doing proper research on the company because doing research means what is going to happen to the selling price of a product let's assume i want to invest in a maruti suzuki if i want to invest in maruti suzuki i want to know what is going to happen to the selling price of cars what is likely demand of the cars how are interest rates going to move up going to go down because interest rates can have an impact on the purchasing power because if, if you have low interest rates people may afford to buy a car because most of the time there is a loan which is taken so there are multiple variables which are there which is going to impact maruti if i tell you to do this research you may be in a position to do one knowledge could be an issue but even if you have the knowledge time is a second issue knowledge and time are two bigger problems for us lot of people don't have the knowledge if you don't have the knowledge obviously you can't do anything you may have the knowledge because you are trying to learn basics and you have the knowledge but if you want to implement it in order to analyze maruti suzuki single company you will take so many days so it is impossible for an individual investor to do all this tracking so when i cannot file my tax returns on my own i give it to an external person so when when i cannot file my tax returns on my own i give it to an external person who takes care of it similarly when you cannot do investment on your own there are lot of people who can take care of your investment mutual fund is one tool there is another tool called as portfolio management service a pms is a tool where a person is going to take care of your investment but pms needs 50 lakh rupees 25 lakh rupees there is a minimum limit which is there so if you bring in that money pms can happen so there are people who provide pms service they will take care of your investment you are not required to do anything you just need to put money people are going to take care of your investments mutual fund is also doing the same thing but the limit there starts with 500 rupees it even starts with 500 rupees or 1000 rupees or 5000 rupee it the limit is on the lower side so what mutual fund is going to do is very simple it is going to collect money from n number of are lot of people collect money from lot of people pool this money together i'll collect this money from lot of people who are like minded investors what is like minded investor is the objective every mutual fund has an objective i'll say my mutual fund objective is i'll invest in large cap stock my mutual fund objective is i will invest 50% in equity 50% in debt there is a mutual fund which will say i'll invest in gold there are also gold mutual fund there are mutual fund which is called equity mutual fund you have debt mutual fund you have balanced mutual fund so every mutual fund has an objective the objective will tell where not the company name i will just say i am going to invest in large cap in large cap in india there can be 50 companies in large cap i am not going to tell you which company and all i'll just give a broad objective saying that our mutual fund has this objective the objective of mutual fund could be investing in large cap stock investing in small cap stock investing in mid cap stock but i'll give my objective i'll say this is the objective of my mutual fund if you like that objective because your objective and the mutual fund objective matches you will give money to the mutual fund you will say i am having this objective like this there can be thousands and lakhs of people there can be thousands and lakhs of people who have this objective once the objective is decided you cannot go and tell mutual fund buy this sell this nothing is happening they'll just give you the objective saying that we are going to do this you don't like the objective don't invest in mutual fund a mutual fund may have an objective saying that i am going to invest in lot of speculative companies you like the objective give money to mutual fund you don't like the objective don't give money to it there are mutual fund which will say we invest in contra companies what is contra companies against the trend there are certain companies which are going to move against the trend you like that objective give the money you don't like the objective don't give the money so when you like the objective practically there are multiple categories you have large cap mid cap small cap flexi cap large and mid cap uh, you have debt mutual fund you have index mutual fund you have elss mutual fund so multiple categories are there you see what is fitting in right for you you will have to check whether it is fitting in for you or not for somebody it may fit in for somebody it may not fit in now if you look at this for example i'm just giving you some names franklin india smaller companies fund 
Now, this mutual fund may be investing in small cap. I am not sure, but it may be investing in small cap. Kotak Emerging Equity Fund. Emerging Equity Fund is going to invest in emerging companies or the companies which are likely to become the next big thing. Quant Tax Plan. This is going to invest based on your ELSS. This is for your ATC benefit. Nippon India Small Cap Fund. This is going to invest in small cap companies. Invesco India Infrastructure Fund. Infrastructure Fund is going to invest in infrastructure companies. That is the companies which do road development or whatever infra development is happening. So there are multiple things which can be there. Uh, just to give another name, SBI large and mid cap fund. So large and mid cap is going to invest in large companies as well as mid cap companies. So different funds are there in the practical world. And what I've shown you is the equity side. Apart from the equity side, you can also have multiple other categories like debt mutual fund. What is debt mutual fund going to do? The debt mutual fund is going to invest in debt instruments. Whatever you learnt in bond valuation, you learnt multiple debt instrument. There are also money market mutual funds. Money market mutual fund is going to invest in money market instrument, liquid plans. They are going to invest in liquid plans. Gold mutual fund, they are going to invest in physical gold. Our physical gold are a variant of physical gold, whatever works well. There are certain mutual funds, for example, you have a mutual fund which is going to invest in US market. There is a mutual fund which is going to invest in China market. So you are very bullish on USA. You may invest in a US mutual fund. So depending on your objective, you decide a mutual fund. So what this guy is going to do is going to collect money from so many people. This money collection can happen at one stretch at the beginning, which is called new fund offer. At one stretch, it will happen. It is called as new fund offer, like an initial public offering. IPO you have, you have new fund offer where I collect this money. Regularly also, you can keep investing money. Regularly also, you can keep giving money. So one, there's a new fund offer, which is like an IPO. And second, there's a secondary issue which can happen or a follow on public offer where you will keep getting the money. So I collect this money on a regular basis from people. I will pool this money together. After pooling this money together, I want somebody to do research on this. So, fund manager, fund manager with a research team, fund manager with a research team will take care of investments. So, there is going to be a fund manager who along with the research team along with the research team is going to take care of this investment exercise. Who will be part of the research team? Most of the times, a lot of chartered accountants, MBAs, all form part of the research team. Sometimes engineers can also form part of research team if you want to evaluate technology companies. So whoever has specialized knowledge to understand financial statements, understand businesses, understand companies, I will have a research team and he's going to be headed by a person called as a fund manager. A fund manager is going to a person who is going to head this, they will keep doing investments, keep buying, keep selling whenever they want, whatever is their objective, whatever they feel is the right time, they'll keep doing this. Now, the fund will earn returns and this will pass on to investor. Fund will earn returns and this will pass on to investor. Now, when the fund is earning returns, there is also something called as a fund expenses. When they earn returns, if I earn 20%, I will not pay you 20%. The mutual fund is going to earn 20%, but I will not give you 20%. Because I have this point number C. There is a fund manager along with the research team who is sitting. I will have to pay salaries to them. Along with that, I may be having an office. So, I will be incurring expenses on that. So, there are a lot of expenses which are going to be. This will be passed to investor post deducting fund expenses. Post deducting fund expenses. So, I will deduct the fund expenses and pay this money to the investor. Pay this money to the investor. When I say pay this money to the investor, how it works, you will understand this. This cycle will keep going on. There is no end to this cycle. Collection money will keep happening. I will pull this money together on a daily basis. I will keep pulling the money together. I will make investments whenever I want. I feel that this is the right time to make investment. I earned returns. Returns gets passed on to the investor. Money collection keeps happening. Returns keep getting earned. Now, why this mutual fund is needed? You will have to understand this and you will have to educate people. Mutual fund is an extremely important tool in a practical world. A tool which is rarely used by people. A tool which is rarely used by people. And I really feel bad that people don't use this tool. Because this is one tool which is going to ensure. See, uh, there's, there's something called this uh, retiring early. This is a uh, movement which is happening at many places. People want to attain financial independence at an early age. There are, Earlier people used to be like that, I would work till 55, 60. 
Now, there are a lot of people who are getting into that saying that I want to retire at the age of 40s, at the age of 45. I don't want to keep working for a longer period of time. Now, how can you retire this if you achieve financial independence? What is financial independence? Is ability of yours to meet your expenses without even earning anything. If you are able to meet your expenses on a regular basis, ad hoc expenses as well as some uh, regular expenses which are going to be there, if you are in a position to meet them, then Technically, I'm not dependent on the salary. So I'm not dependent on the salary if the return from the mutual fund can take care of my salary. The mutual fund is going to give me returns. So if the returns from mutual fund can replace my salary, I need not work. So there is there's a moment which is going on where people say financial independence and retire early. Fire moment. Financial independence and I want to retire early, as early as possible. Now, in order to retire early, there's a saving which is going to happen and investments which is going to happen. Let's take an example. Month. Opening balance, investment, return earned and closing balance. Let's assume you start working moment you cleared your chartered accountancy and you decided that every month you will invest 20,000 rupees. That's the amount you decided. Practical world, whatever you decide to decide, whatever you, sorry, whatever you decide to invest, that will also keep increasing every year because your salaries will keep increasing. But let's assume you decided that it is going to be 20,000 every month. No change. So you started with month one. And opening balance is zero. You're investing 20,000 rupees. You're investing 20,000 rupees. Whatever is the opening balance on that, you will earn some return. Whatever is the opening balance. What you did is you created a fixed deposit. You created a fixed deposit. FD will give you 6% or 7%. After tax, it will give you only 5%. After tax, it's going to give you only... 5% that is what FD can afford to give you cannot because FD has lesser risk lesser risk lesser return so you are going to get 5% return from this so you earn 5% divided by 12 why divided by 12 monthly I am just doing a monthly calculation so first month you did not earn anything because there was no opening balance closing is this then the cycle repeats next month you have 20,000 as the opening balance you earn 20,000 Return is 83 rupees now. Return is 83 rupees. The cycle will keep going on. The cycle will keep going on. Now your balance is go increasing. This cycle can go on for any number of years. Let's assume you decide this for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Whatever number of years you want to decide, you do this. So let me expand this now for a longer period. Let me take an example of 20 years. So I invested for a period of 20 years, 20,000 every month. FD was giving me 5%. It finally led to a return of 82 lakh rupees. I'm left with 82 lakh after 20 years, provided I invest 20,000 every month. This is one approach. You decided 20,000. Second approach is somebody said, I'll do investment in mutual funds. Mutual funds carry risk. That is, I'm discussing about equity mutual fund. There are debt mutual fund also. Debt mutual fund is of no use in practical work because you directly go ahead and create an FD. What is the point of investing in a debt mutual fund? Go ahead and create a fixed deposit and be done with it. There are a lot of people who invest in debt mutual fund, but I personally feel it is of no use because you can directly invest in a fixed deposit. What debt mutual fund is going to do is it is going to invest in multiple bonds. It is going to do investments there. So this happened. I got 82 lakh rupees. I felt this is not that significant. Another person, what he did is he went through mutual fund. Now look at mutual fund returns. This is 10 year returns. Don't go by these numbers of 16%, 30%, 25%. These are the best performing mutual fund. There are worst performing mutual fund which can give negative returns also. There are worst performing mutual fund which will end up giving you negative returns as well. Practically what we see is 12 to 13% is easy return in mutual fund. At least historically going by the historical data, we have seen mutual funds giving 12% return easily. Now look at this change which is going to happen. You got 82 lakh rupees when you invested for 20 years in a fixed deposit. This is in a fixed deposit. Another person said, no, no, I will do mutual fund. I'll get 12% return. I'll get 12% return. Mutual fund also has another benefit. Your tax rate is only 10%. Long term capital gain. As of now, it's only 10%. So 12, maybe if you're paying tax, it is 11. Let's assume you're getting 12% for an imaginary sake. Now, the value goes up to 1 crore 97 lakh. The value goes up to 1 crore 97 lakh, which was 82 lakh rupee. The value has gone up to 1 crore 97 lakh rupees because what has happened here is the return is on the higher side. Now, 
you may see this 1 crore 97 vis a vis 82 lakh. If I check 12 and I move to 11, I move to 11, even 1% return makes a huge deviation in the corpus. People think that 1% is not a big deal. But if 12 becomes 11, the corpus becomes 1 crore 73. So 1 crore 97, which was a corpus, has gone down almost by 20% or 15% when your return is going down by 1%. So one is saving money. Second is investing money. Second part is investing money. Can I do this 12% on my own? I personally have tried investing in stock markets on my own. I have failed. I have failed. I advise a lot of people don't try to invest on stocks on your own because you will not have specialist knowledge. People still don't agree to it. You try spending. Many of my students do it. Then they end up asking me doubts also saying on this company what needs to be done. Your job is not to do at this stage. At this stage obviously it's not to do this. Because your job is to learn about SFM, learn about FR, learn about other subjects and clear this course. Because when you start doing these investments and all, no, your mind, you will occupy somewhere, this part of it will get occupied in your mind and you will be spending a lot of time on this. Because by nature, you will end up spending a lot of time on tracking markets. 9.30 to 3.30, you will not do anything beyond this. If, if at all, some of you have started doing some stock market investing, you may be able to relate to this because you will... Keep on focusing on this rather than focusing on what is critical. What is critical at this stage is learning rather than earning. So if you end up spending time on doing all these things at this stage, it doesn't serve any purpose. So if at all you want to do investment in mutual funds or investment in equity markets, the best route is through mutual fund. And I normally advise people to start as early as possible. There are many of my students when they were uh, at your age, they started doing investment in mutual funds. People at CA Inter also started doing investment in mutual fund. Mutual fund is basically saying if you even have 1000 rupees per month, you can invest because there is no minimum limit which is there. 500 rupees or 1000 rupees per month. There are a lot of people who invest in mutual fund. Now, why this is critical? Why to start early and why mutual fund critical? This is nothing related to the subject. Okay. And uh, whatever I'm going to talk about is not going to help you in, but it is something which is helping in practical world. So one, small deviation in return makes a big issue. Second is practical world, it never remains 20,000. After one year, I will increase this by 5%. I can afford to increase this by 5%, 4%, 3%, depending on your salary increase. So 20,000 will become 21, 20, it will keep going on like this. Now the corpus is 2 crore 72 lakh. Now the corpus is 2 crore 72 lakh. When you keep increasing this money at the rate of 5%, you keep increasing this money at the rate of 5% you end up getting a higher value same issue will happen if you put it in FD if you put it in FD you may not say big deviation 82 lakh is becoming 1 crore 25 82 lakh is becoming 1 crore 25 whereas you are getting 2 crore 72 now why to start early I say I keep saying this to the people that you need to start early you did this for 20 years a friend of yours did the same thing but he started 5 years early he started 5 years earlier than what you did 5 years earlier than what you did any idea what will this 2 crore 72 become if I do investment for 5 more years because in 20 years you accumulated 2 crore 72 in 20 years you accumulated 2 crore 72 any idea what will happen if you invest for 5 more years it will increase but what is the guess number give me a guess number 20 years you accumulated 2 crore 72 assuming you invest for 25 years why 25 years because you started 5 years early what is the likely value? I want to participate. I want you to participate. 3.5. 3.5. Okay. What else? 3.5. 3.5. Okay. What else? 3.5 is one number I have got. Any other number? Okay. You'll be surprised to see the number, but let's check the number. So 5 crore 41 lakh. So you invested for 20 years, you got only 2 crore 70. Another 5 years, the value is almost doubling. Another 5 years, the value is almost doubling. You do another 5 years, it will have the same effect. It will end up having the same effect. Another 5 years is taking the value to 10 crore 44 lakh. Another 5 years is taking the value to 10 crore 44 lakh. This will keep happening. So, if you miss investment by 1 year, if you are missing investment by 1 year, you are missing something called as benefit of compounding. Benefit of compounding. Because what is compounding benefit is as the time period expands. See here, in this case, every month I am earning 10 lakh rupees from mutual fund. Every month I am earning 10 lakh rupees from mutual fund. 
what is the point of doing any job because i am going to get 10 lakh rupees from the mutual fund itself this is broad return okay sometimes negative will happen sometimes positive will happen but broadly 12% return is what mutual fund has historically given it has historically given so two important learnings is one why mutual fund exist is because you cannot invest on your own you do not have the ability to invest on your own when i i am talking to a set of people who are having some knowledge about finance because you are the people at least you learned about financial management ca inter but still i am giving you a point saying that you do not have the knowledge to invest in stock market i have been teaching the subject for a long period but still i don't invest on my own regularly i do sometimes occasionally but i don't invest on my own regularly because i normally take the mutual fund route i prefer to take the mf route because i am not bothered i because i don't do any tracking because if i have to track so many things then i cannot do this i will have to focus on that part of it rather than focusing on this part of it so when a person like you who has knowledge of finance still not still not in a position to invest on your own when i have been teaching this but still i am not in a position to invest my own own then think about the lot of people who are there think about most of your parents may not be having the knowledge on finance they could be specialist in some other area so their specialization and finance is not going to match so when you have any health issue you cannot afford to experiment on your health you will have to go to a doctor he will take care of your treatment he knows what needs to be done so similarly when it is with related to money a specialist person is a fund manager a specialist person is a fund manager he is going to take care of your management uh there is there is a fund manager for hnis there is a fund manager for people who are going to invest in 50 500s 1000 a fund manager for hnis hnis high net worth individual if you can afford to invest 50 lakhs at a time you can go through a pms route you can go through a pms route which is called portfolio management service i cannot afford to go into a pms you also cannot afford to go into a pms because you will not be in a position to invest 25 lakhs at a time or 50 lakhs at a time so then what is the route for you the route for you is mutual fund the route for you is mutual fund and practically also it's very easy to invest in a mutual fund you do not need a demat account you just need to complete your kyc and then start investing in it there is no demat needed uh, you can invest through your bank account you can invest through certain uh, apps which are available but practically it's very easy to invest in a mutual fund so two major learning is one why mutual fund investment is critical you will have to explain to people the gap because 10 crore i got here if i had done this at 5% which is what fd will give you will get only 3 crore look at the deviation 3 crore vis a vis a 10 crore you can understand the amount of difference which is there amount of difference which is there because 3 crore vis a vis 10 crore is a huge difference which is happening second starting early because if you start late what happens also you have understood here so that is why i started investing in mutual fund i think after clearing chartered accountancy still two more years and i felt i started late after clearing my ca i waited for two three years and then only started investing i started late that's what my belief is there's nothing like you will have to invest 50000 1 lakh 1 lakh 50 whatever is convenient for you because there's something called as an sip route what is sip is systematic investment plan where you invest a regular amount you keep investing a regular amount this this example which i showed this is an a systematic investment plan every month i am investing 20000 so mutual fund exist because one you do not have the knowledge of stock markets second you do not have the time to track the stock market it could be either of them or both because there are people who do not have time who do not have knowledge people like you may have some knowledge but time may not be there our time could be there but knowledge could not be there so lot of challenges are there and i cannot call somebody for example there are lot of companies who have an internal fund management team they have an internal fund management team a reliance may have an internal fund management team because they are investing in 10000 crores or 20000 crores you cannot have an internal fund management team because you cannot pay salaries to them how will you pay salaries because your investment amount itself is inadequate so you cannot afford to recruit somebody so what you are doing is you are joining hands with 1 lakh people and recruiting someone you are joining hands with 1 lakh people and recruiting someone so that salary which is paid to that person is divided with among 1 lakh people which you can afford which you can afford so mutual fund does this mutual fund is basically an instrument where i collect money from lot of people i collect money from lot of people after collecting this money the mutual fund is going to make investment as per the investment objective as per the investment objective let me see if i can show you an investment objective investment objective of
So this is one scheme which is there. The investment objective of the scheme is to seek to generate long-term capital growth from an actively managed portfolio, primarily of equity and equity related security. So they are going to invest only in equity share. And it is to give you long-term capital growth. Active management and passive management, there are two things. Active management means regular buying and selling will happen in the mutual fund. Passive management means they will not be doing that much of buying and selling. Scheme shall be investing in Indian equities, foreign equities and related instruments and debt security. So they will invest in Indian companies as well as in foreign company. So if you are not ready to invest in foreign companies you don't want, please don't invest in this. Buying securities at a discount to intrinsic value will help to create value for investors. So we learned about that intrinsic value calculation. They are saying that we will try to buy undervalued security. Our investment philosophy is to invest in such value stock. Long term refers to an investment horizon of 5 years and more. Suddenly you come back to me and saying that I want to invest for 2 years. This is not the fund for you. This is not the fund for you because they have, they have clearly mentioned that we expect you to stay for a period of 5 years or more. If you are okay with this objective, you give money to this mutual fund. If you are not okay with this objective, don't give the money to mutual fund because every mutual fund has an objective. Why people don't invest in mutual fund? I will show you the reason for that also. Just give me a minute. Okay, a mutual fund, uh, this, this is a HDFC mid cap opportunities fund which has given very good returns and all. But mutual funds has this issue which can be there. You see a huge fall happened here. There's a huge fall which has happened here. So a mutual fund can have a fall. This was I think the COVID time. So not COVID time, COVID time is here. Okay, the graph doesn't have the COVID graph. But during COVID time, a lot of mutual funds ended up becoming negative returns, ended up becoming negative returns you invested for a very long period five years you have invested at the end of five years you are at a negative return the reason is that was a one-off event which nobody can predict that was an unfortunate event lot of people pulled out money that time you lost money lot of people stayed invested i had stayed invested and i got huge returns after that so mutual funds obviously will reward you if you stay for long period of time and and do not try changing or tinkering the portfolio at shorter intervals if you can leave this mutual fund portfolio for a longer period of time, you will earn returns. But a lot of people get into the short term investment or when markets crash, when markets crash, you talk to your parents, ask them why don't we invest in mutual funds. Most of them, most of them have a philosophy not to invest in mutual fund because they are conservative in nature. What is conservative is they are not ready to take risk. They are not ready to take risk. Mutual funds carry risk. Mutual funds carry risk. Risk obviously leads to high return. But at your age, at your age, you can afford to take risk. You can afford to take risk. Uh, just give me a minute. I was just waiting for some. Now. I am not able to get but I wanted to show one more thing but this was that fall in 2020. There was a fall which happened in 2020 during the COVID time because when markets crashed everyone had seen a huge fall in the portfolio. If you can stay invested for a long period of time, mutual fund is the basic or the best instrument for long term investing. I normally tell people that whatever money you invest in mutual fund you should forget it. You should forget it. Keep doing your investments. See that money after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, whatever is your time period. Basically, money invested in mutual funds should not be used under any circumstances. It should not be used under any circumstances. Why mutual fund is needed? You understood the difference between 5 and 12 percent. How a 5 vis-a-vis -vis 12 makes a difference, you understood. You also understood why it is to start early vis-a-vis -vis start late. What difference does it make? And why you can't invest on your own? If you are tall, you have invested on your own. You would have seen this what I am talking about because there are people who would have tried investing on their own because of your inability to do tracking, inability to do tracking, you are not able to generate healthy returns and you will not be able to do because a, a doctor can only take care of your health needs. 
you may sometimes say that okay this happened take this medicine it will work sometime but it's not going to work every time saying that this is the issue there is a specialized person who is there so you may say randomly this company will move it will move up but it's not going to happen every time so you need a specialist person to take care of these things and that specialist person is basically an a fund manager any any idea or sorry any doubts on what is mutual fund because now i'll be moving to the subject part of it because whatever i gave you is the practical angle why mutual fund is needed why people are investing in mutual fund now i'm going to get into subject part where you learn how to calculate return how to calculate nav what is expense ratio what is tracking error how do you evaluate mutual fund all this is part of your syllabus so i'll teach about that but any thing you want to know about a mutual fund let me know before i start getting into the subject i tried yeah you can withdraw even the next day except for elss mutual fund which has a limitation of 3 years that is your atc limitation is there apart from that every mutual fund can even be withdrawn the next day there is a penalty which the mutual fund manager will charge there is going to be a penalty which is charged which is called exit load like your prepayment penalty there is a penalty which is charged if you take the money out in between but money can be taken out at any time in a mutual fund it is in fact good if you don't take the money out it is always good if money is not taken out and mf is the only instrument which i i honestly believe mf is the only instrument which can help you in going towards financial independence uh, there is a rule which is in the finance saying that uh, you can invest in fixed deposit you can invest in equity fixed deposit is it needed yes it is needed equities is it needed yes that is also needed doing only fixed deposit is wrong doing only equity is also wrong then what is the mix mix is 100 minus the age of person is your investment in equity this is a rule of finance if you are 20 years 100 minus 20 80% of your investment should be in equity 20% should be in debt debt is risk free debt is risk free you grow older to 40 years 100 minus 40 60% in equity 40% in debt you become 80 years 100 minus 80 20% only in equity 80% in debt as you grow older your ability to take risk goes down your ability to take risk goes down because you may be interested in taking risk but your parents may not be interested in taking risk because they have reached that stage where the risk appetite goes down risk appetite is ability to take risk so 100 minus age of person is a golden rule which says how much you should invest in stock market and how much you should invest in debt i'll now get to the subject part of it uh the first thing which we are going to learn about is what return a mutual fund should generate what return a mutual fund should generate now a return which a mutual fund should generate should meet the expectation of an investor what is now expectation of investor assume i tell you that there is a mutual fund please go ahead and invest in that mutual fund uh, you say why should i invest in mutual fund i can invest on my own then i explain to you when you invest on your own you need to do lot of tracking so why do you want to get into this tracking part of it and also you need to do research but still you are adamant saying that you will invest on your own only then i ask you what will you get if you invest on your own you are saying 14% this is own investment if you invest on your own you will get 14% return this is what you have seen historically then the mf has to earn 14 plus some number why this plus some number is mf has to meet its expenses mf has to meet its expenses so i asked you how much return can you earn you told me 14% how much should the mf earn is it 15 16 17 18 19 20 we will have to arrive at a number we will have to arrive at a number but you are saying you can earn 14% on your own now what should an mf earn let's look at 100 rupees is what you invest 14 rupees is what you are going to earn 14 rupees is what you are going to earn now mf has one issue whenever this doesn't happen in a regular scenario but it happens when you do an initial offer when you do an initial offer you give 100 rupees to the mutual fund mutual fund will get only 95 or 96 or 97 the gap is expenses something called as initial expense ratio something called as initial expense ratio you gave 100 rupees to the mutual fund but they are not getting 100 from you because when you do a stock market issue when you do an ipo i collect 1000 rupees from you but i have to pay underwriting commission prospectus charges some bank commission all that takes away some money so you paid 100 i got only 96 or 97 that is called initial expense ratio that is called initial expense ratio now if i earn 14 percentage on 
I will not get 14 rupees. I will not get 14 rupees if I earn 14 percentage on 97. 14 percentage on 97 is how much? Tell me. 14 percent. Sorry? No, no. 14 percentage on 97. So, I earn only 13.58. You are not happy with this. You are not happy with this. So, first thing is I have to earn 14 rupees for you. I have to earn 14 rupees for you. How can I earn 14 rupees? Is 14 on a base of 97. This much percentage I have to earn. 14 on a base of 97. Why 97? Because you gave me 100. You gave me 100. But I could not get this 100 from you because of lot of expenses which are there. There are lot of expenses which a mutual fund is going to in initial expense, I am not talking about that research and other things. Research and other things, I will come to it. Everyday research needs to be done. Fund manager will be there. Rent will be there. Salaries will be there. I will come to that in some time. First thing I am talking about is, you invested 100. I did not get it. So, 14 by 97 is what percentage? Tell me the percentage. 14 point? Okay. So, first, you want 14 percent. If I earn 14 percent, you will not get 14. I will have to earn 14.43. 14 point? 14 Four three. You wanted fourteen rupees on hundred. I will earn same fourteen rupees, but on ninety seven. I learn some fourteen rupees, but on ninety seven. This also is not sufficient. This also is not sufficient because if I earn fourteen point four three, research team will say give me half a percent. Fund manager will say give me point two five percent. Landlord will say give me point one percent because expenses are there. So along with that, my expenses is two percent. So then I have to earn sixteen point four three percent. I have to earn. 16.43% initial expenses one time initial expenses one time there's a recurring expense which happens there is a recurring expense why the recurring expense happen because i do the job of collecting when i collect money there is some expense when i invest money there is some expense there is rent there is electricity so many expenses are there because there is going to be a proper office which is going to be there you may ask questions to them you, when you do an investment, they have to send you some documents saying that this investment has happened. So, for everything, there is a team needed. An accounting team is also needed because you have to account for this. Accounting part, you learn in FR. But somebody has to account for all this. So, so many people are there. You will have to incur expenses. SEBI has certain restrictions on this expense ratio. There are restrictions on the expense ratio because you cannot allow this very high. Because expense ratio goes up. Problem is for us. Problem is for us. So, what return an MF should earn is, there is a formula. MF return is equal to own return. Own return. What is own return? Is 14%. Own return, 14% divided by 1 minus initial expense ratio. 1 minus initial expense ratio. No need to write. First, understand it. Writing part, you want to do it, do it. It's there in the theory part. I'll tell you to go to that page and then note it in case you want to note something there. It is in page 139. It is in page 139. Theory to solve problems. Own return divided by 1 minus initial expense ratio. Now, what I am trying to do here is, you want to earn 14%. I write it as 14. You can even write it as 0.14. Divided by 1 minus, the initial expense is 3%. 1 minus 0.03. Denominator, can I write 3%? 3% means it is technically 0 0.03 or you want to subtract 3, then you will have to do 100 minus 3. If you want to subtract 3, then you will have to do 100 minus 3. So, 14 divided by 0 0.97 or 14 divided by 97. 14 divided by 0 0.97. Logic is very simple. You gave me 100 rupees, but I am not getting 100 from you. I am not getting 100 from you. This part, practical world is not much. The 1 minus initial expense ratio part is not really much because it is only one time kind of a scenario. This is just a one time kind of a scenario. A lot of mutual funds which exist for now 15 years, 20 years, they will not have this 1 minus IER in the formula. So, they will say own return. 1 minus IER is 1 minus 0 because there is no expense now onwards. There is no expense. Along with that, you will have to afford annual expense ratio or recurring expense ratio. You will have to afford to pay annual expense ratio or the recurring expense ratio which is 2%. You can write it as 0 0.02, you can write it as 2% also. Whatever way you write, it doesn't matter. So, if I earn 16.43, 2% expenses, balance 14.43 is looking like 14.43 for me, but it looks like 14 for you. It looks like 14 for you. Why it looks like 14 for you? Because I am earning 14.43 on 9 to 7. You wanted 14 on 100. You wanted 14 on 
100. So this is the formula to calculate what return an MF should generate. Own return divided by 1 minus initial expense ratio plus annual expense ratio. Be very clear on the logic. Again, not something which I want you to remember. Uh, even in security valuation, except for I think one area where I would have told you to remember the formula, but otherwise no formula remembering, nothing is needed. So logic is very simple. You wanted to earn 14% on 100. You wanted to earn 14 percentage on 100. So I am saying earning 14% on 100 is equivalent to earning 14.5% on 95, 96, 97, whatever is the number plus please provision for this also annual expense ratio. Any doubts till this? Any doubts on this? There are going to be some variants to this which I will explain in a problem. But any doubts on this concept? If this concept is ready, clear, I am going to do some two problems on this. So let me know any doubts on this concept. I will wait for a minute. You can register this formula. Let me know. If you have doubts, you want to write something, you write your wish. Fourteen by nine to seven. Earning fourteen. Yeah, tell me. Annual expenses every time. You keep incurring every time. There's no end to the annual expense. So this has to be earned every time. Initial expense. Let's assume three percent. That does not mean I have to earn fourteen plus three plus two. Initial expense is three percent. Fourteen plus three plus two is not needed because three is only one off. Three is only one off. 2 is always, every year you are going to incur it. So if you want to pay 14, be ready to earn 16. Not fix it. It will keep changing. But you will incur every year. It will be around 2%, 1.9%, some range. So I want to earn 14 rupees. I want to earn 14 rupees. I invested 100. I invested 100. I wanted to earn 14 rupees. When you invested 100, I got only 97 from you. Why I got 97? 3 rupees went in expenses. So, I want to earn now 14 rupees on an investment of 97. 14 rupees on an investment of 97 because I got only 97. I got only 97. So, 14 by 97 is the formula. What the mutual fund should earn, what ultimately will come to use only 14%. What ultimately is going to come to use only 14%. Why 14%? Because what ultimately will come to use after meeting all these expenses. So in the practical world, I showed you this chart. This is not what the mutual fund has earned. This is the return the mutual fund has given to the investor. This is what they have given to the investor. They would have earned some 2-3% more. They would have earned some 2-3% more because they would have met expenses, everything. And after that only it will come to you. So what comes to you is what is shown there. So what ultimately, see what you are trying to say is, I earn 14% on my own. Mutual fund is also giving me 14%. Let me not have this headache. Let me get the money from mutual fund. I don't want this headache itself. So let me get the money directly from the mutual fund at 14%. But for the mutual fund to give you 14, it has to earn 16 or 17. It has to earn 16 or 17. So we are calculating what return an MF should generate so that it gives you 14%. So that it gives you 14%. Clear any doubts on this? Practical world, you will never get to know what MF is earning. What MF is earning? You can do a broad calculation saying that what you get plus the expense ratio. That is a broad calculation. But what MF is earning is not your headache. It is really not your headache because ultimately you will know what is the annualized return you are earning. What is the annualized return you are earning and you are only bothered about that. You are only bothered about what annualized return you are going to get. This concept which you see is practically something which a MF manager has to check. It is only for the MF manager to check because my investor wants 15%. So how much should I earn so that I can give 15% to these guys? So I may have to earn 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever the number works out to be. This percentage is of no use to you because you are not going to do this analysis. As an investor, you will never do this analysis as to what an MF should earn because that's not your worry. That's never your worry. MF is going to do investment. They are going to earn what will ultimately come to use. Your mind is very clear. Give me 14%. Give me 14%. Any doubts? Come to question 1. Go through question 1. Page 141. Go through question 1.
you guys want to switch off the ac take the remote okay let's look at this mr a can earn a return of 16% by investing in equity shares on his own now is considering a recently announced equity based mutual fund scheme in which the initial expenses are 5.5% annual recurring expense are 1.5% how much should the fund earn so that it can give a return of 16% what we are trying to evaluate is how much should the fund earn so that you get your 16% what should be the expense ratio if the mf can earn 18% and what should be the initial expense ratio if the MF can earn 19%? So, I'll start explaining it and then we start doing it. I am very clear that I want to earn 16%. So, I want the MF to earn more. I want the MF to earn more. So, now they are saying MF will have this 1.5% expense and 5.5% expense. First part is saying how much should the MF earn. Second part is saying MF can earn 18%. You tell me what should be the expense ratio. Third part is saying MF can earn 19%. Tell me what should be the initial expense ratio. Yours is very clear 16. MF will be more than 16. MF has to be more than 16. That is what we are trying to evaluate here. What we are trying to evaluate is how much should I earn so that MF can give 16% ultimately to us. Now write MF return is equal to MF return is equal to own return divided by 1 minus IER. IER is initial expense ratio. 1 minus IER initial expense ratio plus AER annual expense ratio. 1 minus IER plus AER annual expense ratio. How much the MF can earn on its own? I am writing everything in decimal because some students con got confused in the last batch. 0 0.16, 16% is 0 0.16. What is the initial expense ratio? 0 0.055. 0 0.055. Annual expense ratio? 0 0.015. Give me a four decimal number for the first part. Point. No, first segment. One eight, final answer is one eight four two. One six. One six nine three. Plus zero point zero one five. Put together is point one eight four three. Are technically. 18.43%. You can leave, even leave the numerator 16 and 1.5, but denominator has to be either 5.5% or 0 0.055. Denominator you will have to take care. Numerator, even if you write it as 16 and 1.5, you will end up getting the same answer. Now, we got a different answer. I have left everything in decimal because some confusion happened in the past batch. I didn't want, so I have left it in decimal. So, 18.43% MF should earn. MF should earn. 18.43% so that I get my 16%. Clear? Will we get to know how much is MF is earning? Mostly no and it's not your headache also. You are not even interested in knowing what MF is earning. What ultimately matters to is what I am going to get from the MF. Part 2. Same formula. The balancing figure is going to be different now. MF return is equal to own return divided by 1 minus IER plus AER, IER plus AER, in part 2 how much is the MF earning, 18%, you wanted 16, how much is the initial expense ratio, it continue, if nothing is given it will continue to be as per the original situation, it says, Ascertain the expense ratio. Target expense ratio is what they are asking you to calculate. Initial expense is same. Target is the annual expense. 1 minus 0, 0.55 5 plus AER. AER is the balancing figure. 
पॉइंट वन एट माइनस पॉइंट वन सिक्स नाइन थ्री ए आर इज दी बैलेंसिंग फिगर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन जीरो सेवन और वन पॉइंट जीरो सेवन परसेंट वन पॉइंट जीरो सेवन परसेंट बैलेंसिंग फिगर lot of times in the practical world people track this expense ratio a lot because if expense ratio goes up our returns are going to go down so you can, because of that only sebi also has limitation and you also want to track this mutual fund will not increase the expense ratio immediately and all it cannot increase randomly and all it will try to keep its expense ratio within a set limit so that they can give the balance returns to their investors next is the same formula IER is going to be balancing figure. Own return divided by one minus IER plus AER. How much is the MF earning? Nineteen percent. Own is sixteen divided by one minus IER is the balancing figure. One minus IER. Plus AER is zero point zero one five. Annual expense ratio is point zero one five. Even if we write it as one point five, it is fine. Calculation part. If you have doubts, let me know. Concept. I've tried to explain the logic of the formula. Calculation. If there are challenges, let me know. This goes the other side. Point one seven five is equal to point one six by one minus IER. I take one minus IER this side. Point one six by point one seven five. Give me a four decimal number for this point one six by point one seven five. Zero point nine. Four three, IER is equal to one minus point nine one four three. Zero eight are technically. This is only a one time kind of an expense. Your initial expense ratio is only one time. Eight point five seven percent you can afford to pay. You can afford to pay eight point five seven percent as the initial expense ratio. One minus IER is equal to point one six by. Point one seven five, one minus IER is point nine one four three. IER is equal to one minus point nine one four three, which is zero point zero eight five seven. Any doubts on this? Any doubts on this part? Clear? Now I'm uh, done. Any doubts? I am going to bring a variant now. What is the variant? Is this they I say tested in one exam? It is a very good problem. They tested a variant. They said you are saying you will invest sixteen percent on your own. MF will give eighteen percent so that you get sixteen percent. But technically there is a gap in this analysis. When you invest sixteen percent on your own, you are spending daily one hour on this. You are spending daily one hour on this when you are earning sixteen percent on your own. When MF is giving you sixteen percent, you are not spending that one hour. You are not spending that one hour because MF is not going to. You are not going to do any tracking. At best, what people do in MF investment is once in three months or once in six months they'll just check the returns, which will be some half an hour kind of an analysis. That's all. But when you invest on your own, your daily spending time. So they gave a problem where they saying I can invest on my own, which is good. I can invest on my own, which is good. But there is an opportunity cost along with it. There is an opportunity cost because I could have spent that one hour. In taking classes, I could have spent that one hour in taking some other subject that could have given me an income of ten lakh rupees. Now, where is the ten lakh in our analysis? Because the formula is nowhere bringing this into our analysis. Formula nowhere said that you can earn ten lakhs on your own because what you are doing is every day you are spending one hour two hours on this. When you spend one hour two hours on this, that time could have been spent somewhere else because the formula just said that own return is so much divided by one minus I R. Who will factor this opportunity cost? Who will factor this? Opportunity cost. So own return of fourteen percent has an opportunity cost. MF return of sixteen percent or eighteen percent or whatever MF is giving 
it does not have an opportunity cost so indirectly i can say if you can invest on your own and get 14 and if mf gives you 12 you should still be happy about it you should still be happy about it if mf is giving you 12 because you're saving that one hour a day you're saving that one hour a day that they tested in an exam question they tested that in an exam question saying that you could have if that comes in formula will not work formula is not going to work because i cannot provision that into the formula so in that scenario we are going to do something called as a cost benefit analysis we are going to do something called as a cost benefit analysis that is if you do invest on your own what are the benefits what are the cost when you invest in mf what are the benefits what are the cost and then try to evaluate which is better then try to evaluate which is better formula will work if i don't have this concept of opportunity cost and logically speaking there is a huge opportunity cost there is a huge opportunity cost because if i tell you to invest on your own be ready to spend some time on a daily basis you will have to spend time on a daily basis it's not one time spending because you will have to track whatever companies you have invested maybe 5 minutes a day 10 minutes a day 15 minutes a day you decide the amount of time but you will have to track it on regular basis this regular tracking because you look at for example i told you to invest in uh, stock markets directly you did not do it you did it through this hdfc mid cap opportunity fund now this hdfc mid cap opportunity fund just give me has invested in so many companies indian hotels company cholamandalam investment max healthcare tata communication apollo tires bharat electronics sundram fasteners i am least bothered what is happening to this company the mf manager will take care of it he will take care of all of this i just invested in this mf if you invest on your own can you track so many companies not possible can you track so many companies not possible he will do the job of tracking everything and it's not only 10 companies there can be more companies also there can be more companies also he will do the job of doing all this tracking where is that getting factored in the formula it's not getting factored it is not getting factored in the formula which is wrong which is wrong you will have to factor this in your analysis because the mf is doing this job of yours he is doing job of yours he is doing two hours he is saving two hours for you where is that getting factored in is what you are going to see in the next question any doubts any doubts on the next concept which i gave you formula will not work if there is an opportunity cost question 2 is homework go through question 3 and do part 1 part 1 is through formula part 1 is through formula quickly close part 1 part 2 is that opportunity cost question 3 part 1 Part 1 is formula based, you complete that, part 2 I will take you through. Point one five divided by one minus zero point zero six plus zero point zero two put together final answer seventeen point. So this is what MF has to earn if it has to give you fifteen percent, which is simple formula based approach. That is a simple formula based approach. I don't have anything to explain there. I've already explained you the formula. I'll now move to the second segment of the question. The second segment where an opportunity cost element is going to come in. I'll read out. You'll understand what is the opportunity cost we are talking about there. Mr. Alex, current annual professional income is rupees 40 lakhs. So, he is a chartered accountant. His income is around 40 lakh rupees. His portfolio value is 50 lakhs. And now is spending 10 percentage of his time to manage the portfolio. If he spends this time on profession, his professional income will go up in same proportion will go up in same proportion he is thinking to invest his entire fund in a multi cap fund assuming the funds nav will grow at 13% per annum including the 
dividend nav growth is the final return nav what is nav you will see it later but nav growth is the final return which mf is going to give you after meeting all its expenses you are requested to advise whether you can invest his portfolio into multi cap fund what is the net financial benefit if you invest on your own you earn a return of 15% i told this uh, charter accountant that you earn 15% on your own there's an mf which can give 13% he said no he said directly no why should i invest for 13% when i can earn 15% on my own then i went for next explanation told him you are spending 10% of your time on this don't spend this 10% on time do your office work if you do your office work this 40 lakh will go up to some number this 40 lakh will go up to some number they that the data is given how will it go up you'll have to do the calculation so we will do net benefit analysis or cost benefit analysis and then decide what is the net benefit of investing in multi cap fund are investing on your own one of them one of them whether you do the benefit for mf or benefit for own investment you decide that and then finally say which is better finally say which is better because here is spending 10 percentage of his time he is spending 10 percentage of his time for managing this and this is real scenario okay this is nothing like i am creating practically this is what is going to happen when you invest on your own one you may have to spend time Second, people, if you don't spend time, then you will not earn return. There's other categories. People will just invest randomly. They'll say, this will move up, this will go down. You'll do random investment. You don't do any tracking, you will not earn returns. You do tracking, then you lose your professional income. You lose your professional income. So, you'll have to balance that. Let's start this calculation now. Cost-benefit analysis of, cost-benefit analysis of investing in multi-cap fund. Investing in multi cap fund, particular calculation amount. Investing in multi cap fund, capital A benefits, and maybe three four lines capital B costs. Costs are technically like opportunity costs benefits and costs <laughs> benefits and costs return from mf return from mf return from mf how much is our portfolio 50 lakhs what is the mf going to give me 13 percent that is what i earn what i lose i'll write in some time there's also loss which is happening what i earn is 50 lakh into 13 percent 6 lakh 50 50 lakh into 13 percent 6 lakh 50 thousand Now, what I lose is opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? It is 50 lakh into 15%. 50 lakh into 15%. And this is one reason why I didn't want to do MF as of now. My logic was I can earn 6 lakh 50, but I lose 7 lakh 50. I will lose 7 lakh 50. What is 7 lakh 50 is? I could have invested on my own. I could have invested on my own. So, this is my opportunity cost. This is my opportunity cost. If the heading was cost benefit analysis of investing on own, then this is income and this is opportunity cost. You earn 15%, but you lose 13%. You earn 15 or net net, you either earn extra 2% or lose 10%. But when you invest through MF, there's one extra benefit increase in professional income. Increase in professional income. Increase in professional income. Now, earlier, let's assume this is 100 percentage of the time available. What I used to do is 90 percent for profession, 10 percent for MF, 90 percent for profession, 10 percent for investment on own. This 90% gave me an income of, so this 10% now can give me extra. 
this 10% can give me extra. Earlier, if I have 100 hours, 90 hours was for my profession. 10 hours was for tracking my portfolio. 90 hours gave me 40 lakh rupees. 90 hours gave me 40 lakh. 10 hours has to give me something extra now. 10 hours has to give me something extra. What is the extra 10 hours will give? 4 lakh 44,000. 444 ICI solution is wrong to this. They have directly taken 10% of 40 lakh. They have directly taken 10% of 40 lakh, which is wrong. So I am deviating from ICI solution here. It would be mentioned in my printed solution also. Some places I deviate where I cannot manage it because logically I cannot explain you 4 lakh because 100 hours I have, 90 hours I was spending for profession, 10 hours I was spending for tracking. So it is like this. Now what is going to happen is increase in professional income is 90 is equal to. 40 lakh extra 10 can give you how much 90 is equal to 40 lakh what is extra 10 going to give you extra 10 will give you something now how much we can call this as benefit of mf investment or if you had done the other way around, it is opportunity cost of own investment. This is a opportunity cost of doing investment on your own. If you invest on your own, this is opportunity cost. If you do MF investment, this is an extra benefit which is coming in. Clear? Any doubts on this? Total benefits. Total benefits. Looks like MF investment is better. Net benefit, net benefit, I will earn some extra 3 lakh rupees, 3 lakh 44,000, net benefit, total benefit 10 lakh 94 triple 4, net benefit 3 lakh 44,000, 444. Net benefit is 3,44,444. Any doubts on the calculation? Now, logically, when should I then invest on my own? If this 50 lakh was 500 lakhs, then maybe the answer could have changed. If this 50 was 500 lakh, because when your value goes up, even 1 or 2 percent is going to make a big difference. So, if this was 500 lakh, in my calculation, this would have been 65 lakh and this would have been 75 lakh. I will not do investment through MF. I will do my own investment. I will do my own investment. But there is another challenge. When portfolio value goes up, the time to track may also go up. The time to track may also go up. Because when you have a smaller portfolio, you are tracking it faster. When you have a larger portfolio, maybe the time to track can go up. Practical world you do not have the ability to invest on your own because your portfolio value will be very less. When you have a very high portfolio, if you have 1 crore, 5 crore, 10 crore, you can do on your own or afford to <coughs> give salary to one person and tell him to do all research and all. But when you have a smaller investment, mutual fund is the only route. Any doubts on this? No, no, your professional income, why will it go up? Because based on your investment portfolio. Professional income is what you are getting in from your office. Your portfolio has no linkage to your professional income. Question can say that his professional income now is 100 lakh, 50 lakh. That's a different story. But professional income has no relation to your amount which you are investing. No. Professional income is what you are going to get from your CA practice. So that does not depend on what is your portfolio of investment. Any doubts on this? The only thing which can change is it can be said that if you have 500 lakh portfolio, the question will say you are spending 40 percent of your time rather than spending 10 percentage of your time, you are spending 40, 50, 60 percentage of your time in tracking the portfolio. Any doubts on this? Clear? Yep. Okay. Next segment is I explained that how much MF should earn vis a vis own. Now, I want to know ultimately what return I am getting. What return I get it through is an instrument or is through something called as NAV. In when you did equity valuation, we calculated P1, P0, P2, P3. This is called price of an equity share. This is called price of an equity share. 
similar to price in mutual fund we have something called as nav0 nav1 nav2 what is nav more explanation will proceed maybe after one hour of class or maybe even the next session but nav is like price nav is like price of a mutual fund nav is like a price of a mutual fund practical world nav will be in decimals 136.378 nav will be in decimal 136.378 this mutual fund has a fund size of 42000 crore it has a fund size of 42000 crore its expense ratio is 0.88% its expense ratio is 0.88% whatever numbers you saw some relate, relatable numbers for you as your fund size goes up no they will also be able to reduce their expense ratio they will also be able to reduce because you have benefits of economies of scale for them also there is a benefit of economies of scale so in this case the nav is 136.378 one more thing which you need to understand is i plan to invest in equity share i have to buy 1 2 3 4 5 6 equity share mutual fund you can buy 8.925 units you can buy 9.215 units mutual fund units will be in decimals mutual fund units will be in decimal why is it in decimal because practical world i'll say i want to invest 1000 rupees i'll invest 1000 rupees what the mf will do is 1000 divided by 136.378 it will allot the units 1000 divided by 136.378 Practical world MF units are in decimals. Sometimes it is even four decimal also. There are four decimals also, three decimals also, but MF units are going to be in decimals. So what MF happens is in case of an equity share, you can just maybe write this also. In case of an equity share and MF, in equity share you have number of shares. Here you have number of units. Here you have number of units. In equity share you have market price. Here you have NAV. Here you have NAV. In equity share, number of shares is fixed. Number of shares is fixed. That is, the company allotted 5 lakh shares, it will remain 5 lakh. One person will buy, another person will sell. One person will buy, another person will. Here, number of units will change every day. Number of units are going to change every day. Why does it change? Because somebody new came in, somebody old left new came in old left or new came in new came in it can keep changing shares are whole number mf unit can be in decimal you can just write this practical world you can invest a random amount called 95,140 rupees there's only a minimum amount which is 500 or 1000 or 5000 some mf has 500 some mf has 1000 some mf has 5000 Beyond that, your wish. You want to do 5,295. Okay. You'll have to buy 1, 2, 3, 4. For example, you want to buy MRF, 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. You need to put 1 lakh 10,000 and get one share of MRF. I cannot get in decimals. So, mutual fund, some mutual fund will have NAV of 1 lakh 10,000. Practically, I have not seen that, but let's assume it has 1 lakh 10,000. Doesn't matter. Because you are going to do investment as 1,000 rupees. It will do 1,000 by 1 lakh 10. It will allot you in decimal. It is going to allot you in decimals. MF allotment will happen in decimals. NAV will be in decimals. And your number of units, allot, sorry, number of units is in decimal. NAV is also going to be in decimal. Amount which you invest, it's your wish. There is a minimum amount. There is a minimum amount. Beyond that minimum amount, anything can be invested. How NAV is calculated, I'll spend time on this later because the second segment of the chapter is on NAV where we have some 10 12 problems to discuss it. So, I don't want to spend time on NAV for the time being. NAV for the time being is price. NAV for the time being is price. So, then how do I calculate return? MF return is equal to listen for some time, be in listen mode. You want to make notes, you can go back to the same page page 139 where the next concept is covered mf return is equal to simple formula is what i get back i gave you this formula in money market instrument minus what i invest divided by what i invest into 100 that was into 12 by m i'll come to into 12 by m in some time into 100 what you get back, assume you invested for one year. 
you invested for one year let me explain equity share for the time being let me explain equity share you invested for one year at the end of one year you will get p1 at the end of one year you will get p1 you will get that back you will get that back because you sold it at the end of year one what did you give you gave p0 you gave p0 along with this mutual fund gave you or the shares gave you d1 d1 is dividend it paid you some dividends p1 minus p0 p1 is the price you got in the end p0 is the price you paid p0 is the price you paid the gap is technically called as capital gain the gap is technically called as capital gain or capital appreciation and it also paid some dividend it also paid some dividend M divided by p0 into 100 into 100 this is what is the return of a share this is what return of a share when it comes to mutual fund this is called nav 1 minus nav 0 plus d1 divided by nav 0 there's something else i'll explain that something else into 100 into 100 what a mutual fund does is it is in the job of buying and selling of shares mostly buying and selling of shares so when it does buying and selling of share mutual fund will have primarily two income one is dividends second is capital gain the mutual fund the mutual fund will have dividends and capital gain whatever i'm explaining is only a theoretical concept i have not seen this in practical world so but some question will have this term so mutual fund will be paying dividends mutual fund will be paying dividends if the dividend is paid out of the dividend earned by the mutual fund if the dividend is paid out of the dividend earned by the mutual fund it is called as d1 if the dividend is paid out of the capital gain earned by because the mutual fund will be earning capital gain if it's earned out of the capital gain earned by the mutual fund it is called cg1 technically both are dividend technically both are dividend practical well i have not seen cg1 i have not seen cg1 there is no difference basically mutual fund is paying you dividend mutual fund is paying you dividend the dividends could be paid out of the dividends earned by them or the dividends could be paid out of the capital gains earned by them you are least bothered you are saying just the dividend is what i ultimately want i am not bothered whether it is paid out of d1 or whether it's paid out of dividends or capital gain so the formula is nav1 minus nav0 plus d1 plus cg1 d1 plus cg1 you can call it as plus dividend type 1 plus dividend type 2 dividend type 1 and dividend type 2 both are dividends only both are dividends only type 1 dividends and type 2 dividends i'm giving you two different types of dividend so whole divided by nav0 so nav1 minus nav0 plus d1 plus cg1 divided by nav0 into 100 into 100 this is called return of a mutual fund this is called return which you generate out of a mutual fund return which you generate out of a mutual fund not the return which mf is earning we are not bothered about that we just saw that earlier now i calculated this and got the answer as five percent five percent but this five percent what i got was for per three months because i invested only for three months i invested only for three months you got this calculation you got the answer as five percent you can say five percent for three months or five percent per quarter you earned this five percent for three months when you do this and don't bring time factor into picture it is called holding period return what is holding period is return for the holding period which is three months return for the holding period which is three months practical well people don't understand holding period return you don't understand holding period return you ask me what return you earn i told one person now you're thinking what is this one person i don't understand this one person then i say it's one person per month then you're saying okay one person per month means 12 percent per year one person per month means 12 percent per year i'm very happy about that return if it's 12 percent per year so five percent per month if you do into 12 by m here into 12 by m it is called annualized return into 12 by m if you do it is called annualized return that is called your annualized return if you do into 12 by m on top of this into 12 by m on top of this when we did money market i kept on doing into 12 by m which is the logical thing which is the logical thing but sometimes question will ask you holding period return and annualized return holding period return and annualized return so holding period return is this annualized return is into 12 by m annualized return is into 12 by m any doubts on this formula is very simple what you get back minus what you invest divided by what you invest into 12 by m into 100 if you do into 12 by m it is called annualized return if you don't do into 12 by m that is called 
holding period return what is holding period return is return for whatever is your holding period which could be 10 months which could be one month which could be five months which could be a year which could be two years three years four years i'm not getting into that part but that is called holding period return return for whatever is your holding period any doubts on this again i repeat it that's why i said this is not the capital gain which you understand this is basically the capital gain which mf has earned the MF kept on doing investments. They do buying and selling. When you do buying and selling, you will earn some returns out of it. That is called capital gains earned by them. This capital gain may be distributed, may not be distributed. Don't try to. That is, this is the exact doubt which past students also has. That is why I didn't even want to teach the CG1. For the timing, just understand CG1 is a dividend. You will see in one problem the difference here. CG1 is dividend. It is not capital gain. It is type 1 dividend, type 2 dividend. I give a name called CG1, but this is technically, this is technically not NAV1 minus NAV0. Please don't link it with NAV1 minus NAV0. NAV1 minus NAV0 is capital appreciation. Let's keep it that way. D1 is type 1 dividend. CG1 is type 2 dividend. CG1 is type 2 dividend. NAV1 minus NAV0 is not CG1. Is not CG1. That's an unnecessary confusion. And in fact, I don't know why CG1 is itself there. Because technically, it is a dividend. It is a dividend. Any doubts on this? Any doubts anywhere in this? Okay, let's take a break of 10 minutes. Okay, so we have understood how to calculate return. The formula for return is what you get back minus what you invest divided by what you invest into 100. If you do into 12 by M, that is called annual return. If you just do into 100, that is called holding period return. Let's see this in few questions and then I'll touch on some variance to this. Let's come to question 4. A mutual fund had a net asset value of 20 at the beginning of the month. Made income and capital gain distribution. Made income and capital gain distribution of 0 0.0375 and 0 0.03 per unit respectively during the month. Ended the month with a net asset value of 20.06. Compute the monthly return. Compute the monthly return. Okay. If the question asks, if there's nothing much in the question, if the asks you annualized return, then you'll have to do into 12 by M. Wherever annualized return is asked, do into 12 by M. If the question just says compute the return and doesn't mention anything, We'll calculate both HPR as well as the annualized one, both the holding period return as well as the annualized return. In fact, in one formula itself, we'll get it. For example, how our answer would be is we'll say 5% per three months or 20% per annum. Here itself, I'll give the answer. 5% per month or 5% per quarter or convert into year, convert that into year. Here, the requirement is to calculate monthly return. I'll give both monthly as well as the annual return. I'm going to give you both monthly and annual. I started with NAV of 20, ended with NAV of 20.06. Opening NAV, it's basically formula said NAV 1 minus NAV 0, but the formula technically is closing NAV minus opening NAV because there, there P0, P1 means P1 means price of the first year. P2 means price of the second year, P3. Here in mutual fund, what will happen is you will see NAV0 means today's NAV. NAV1 could be whatever time period you are analyzing, which could be a week, a month, a quarter, a year. There are problems where we go beyond 10 years also. We go for 10 year calculation. And NAV in the practical world is calculated on a daily basis. This is 1st August NAV, which had a fall of 0.19% which had a fall of 0.19%, there will be an NAV which is calculated on a daily basis, which is calculated on a daily basis. So whenever you want, you can make an entry on whatever is the NAV prevailing on that day, based on that entry will happen. So NAV has to be computed on a daily basis. In this case, NAV was 136, which had a fall of 0.19%. It had a fall of 0.19%. Let's now come to this. MF return is equal to MF return is equal to NAV1 minus NAV0 plus type 1 dividend, type 2 dividend divided by NAV0 into 100. NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1. D1 plus CG1 divided by NAV0 into 100.
Now NAV1 does not mean year 1 NAV. NAV1 means closing NAV. NAV0 means opening NAV. That is what the formula is going to be. So what is the closing NAV? Opening NAV. The gap between this is capital gain or appreciation. Whatever name you want to give. That is your capital appreciation. CG1 is not capital appreciation. CG1 is a dividend. It is a type 2 dividend. It is a type 2 dividend. What is the type 1 dividend they have mentioned? How much is D1? 0.0375 capital gain distribution both are technically dividends only both are technically dividend only i don't see any difference between these two divided by 20 i don't see anything on the tax side also if at all deviation can be there if at all something is there in income tax but i don't remember anything there in income tax to distinguish these how much is this 0.6375 percent per month or into 12 doing to 12 or 7.65 percent per annum question wanted only per month i am doing both per annum 7.65 percent per annum so assumption is you earn the same return over the next 12 months so what is annualizing is whatever return you earned, you are annualizing that. I am not going to annualize what is going to happen second. I am not forecasting second month, third month return and all. I am just done. Based on this, I am saying the annualized is going to be so much. Any doubts on this? Clear? I want to show a variant of this question. Go through question 6. Go through the 6th question. Okay, NAV of XYZ mutual fund, a close-ended fund. Let me first explain what is a close-ended fund and an open-ended fund. An open-ended fund is one where you can buy and sell at any time. You can do a buying and selling at any time. When I say buying and selling, you can invest any time. You can redeem at any time. You can invest at any time and redeem at any time. Today, I want to invest in HDFC mid-cap opportunity fund. I can invest. Tomorrow, I want to redeem. I can redeem. A close-ended fund is where this is not possible. A close-ended fund, this is not possible. Because what close-ended fund is saying is, you will keep buying and selling random dates. It is very difficult for me to manage money. See, as a fund manager, I want some certainty as to how much money is there. So, I invested 5 crore in TCS. Suddenly, one guy said, give me back 2 crore. Then, selling that and giving back is a difficult task. Suddenly, somebody gave me 5 crores extra. Suddenly, somebody pulled out the money. Gave me this money. Most of the practical world, you have open-ended funds only. You have open-ended. But close-ended, what will happen is, on day one, I collect money from you. On day one, I collect the money from you. After collecting the money from you, I will not allow any new entry or redemption. No any new entry. There will be an exit date saying that the exit will happen after 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever is the time period. But in between, taking out the money and giving the money is not acceptable. Then what will you do? If you want, you can sell it in the market. You can sell it in the market. It will be listed in the market. There will be someone else who will do buying and you will do selling. So, it is like a share. It is like a... When what happens in a share is a company collects money from you. You cannot tell the company that I give you share back and give me back money. Company will not give you that. What you can do is you can sell it to your friend. He can sell it to someone else. He can sell it. So, it, the cycle can keep going on like that. In MF, we have two types. One is where the mutual fund will take the unit back from you 
and give you the value. Take the unit back from you and give you the value, which is an open-ended fund, which is an open-ended fund. Where will this keep on happening? Close-ended fund, they are saying, I want to restrict your entry. I want to, I'm closing the mutual fund for further entry and further withdrawal. The fund can tell that, again, next entry will happen after six months. They can give their date saying that after six months, entry and redemption is allowed. After another six months, entry and redemption is allowed, but not on a daily basis, not on a daily basis. So in that case, what will happen is the MF trading will happen. There's going to be trading, which is going to happen to the MF. When trading happens in the MF, there's a possibility that the real value, the real value is the NAV. The real value is the NAV, but the market price can be slightly above or slightly below because when trading happens, the price is also influenced by demand and supply. The price gets influenced by demand and supply of a product or demand and supply of a share. So if some share is on high demand, you will see the prices going up. Share is in low demand, prices going down. So the price is 28. The value as on 31, 12, 2014 is 28.8. That is if you have bought it from the mutual fund, you should have bought it at 28 and sold at 28.8. If at all, you have done this entry and exit. On the same day, it was trading in the market at a premium of 3%. Market, because if you want to do it through market, there could be a premium, there could be a discount. It could be either ways. It was trading at a premium. So on 1-1-2014, the same was trading at a discount of 5%. On 31-12, it distributed income. You are required to compute rate of return to the investor during the year. In a close-ended fund, formula is NAV1 minus NAV0 only. But this NAV1, you will have to change it slightly. Why should you change it slightly? Because what has happened is, the real value is 28. But I am paying something more or something less because in the market, I'll have to do it through the market. When you do it through the market, there's a possibility that it can quote at premium. It can also quote at discount. What is the reason for that? Because a lot of buying and selling is happening because of which there can be some inaccuracy in the price. There can be some inaccuracy in the price. NAV is the real value. How is NAV calculated? We'll see it later. But NAV is the real value. Any doubts on this first? Any doubts on this first? Clear? Let's write few information and then we do the calculation. Date, NAV, price in market. Date, NAV and price in market. Three columns. Date, NAV, price in market. 1-1-2014 and 31-12-2014. 1 1 2014 31 12 2014 what were the navies 28 and 28. in a normal scenario 28.8 is nav1 28 is nav0 for the formula nav1 minus nav0 for the formula but Read the question and tell me what was the price in the market when it was 28. It said something. 28 point. Read it carefully. Read it carefully. On 1-1-2014, it was trading at 5% discount. On 1-1, it says on the same date, same date is 31-12-2014. It is trading at premium of 3%. So on 1-1-2014, it was trading at discount of 5%. So 28 minus 5 percent, 26.6, 26. 28.8 plus 3 percent, this is minus 5 percent, 29.66, you can have 3 decimals and all, practical world, NAVs can be in decimal. This is what the question has said. Ideally, I don't see so much deviation happening. There will not be so much deviation. There will be deviation. There will be deviation. But this 5%, 3% all is very high. Half a person, 1% or less than half a person deviation can be there on the NAV as compared to what is the price prevailing in the market. Any doubts on this? No, you will have same concept. Same, no, holding period also can be there. Ah, trade in the nature of equity. This is traded in the nature of equity. Now listen, I said formula is NAV1 minus NAV0. But in this case, my entry is not happening at 28. NAV0 for me is not 28. NAV0 is 
28, but for me it is not 28 because I am paying only 26.6. The NAV1 for everyone is 28.8, but for me it is not 28.8. It is 29.664 because my entry and exit happened at some premium and some discount. Formula everything is going to remain same, but you will have to look at this data. You will have to look at the price data, not the NAV data. Why not the NAV data? Because you are not entering and exiting at that price. You are not entering and exiting at that price. Why is that not happening? Because it is a close ended fund. So, you could not do it through the mutual fund. You do it through an outside route. When you are doing it through an outside route, because of the forces of demand and supply, you are seeing some variation. You are seeing some variation. Formula remains same. MF return is equal to NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 by NAV0 into 100 if you do into 12 by M. In this case, it is not going to make a difference because it's one year. 12 by M is 12 by 12. In this question, it is not going to make any difference whether you call it as holding period or you call it as annual return. That is only this problem. Okay, Some other problem, it can be there. Close ended fund can also have HPR and annualized return. NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 divided by NAV0. Why we call it as NAV1 minus NAV0 is what you get back minus what you invest. What is NAV1? 29.664. Because this is the price you are going to pay. It is not 28.8. It is not 28.8. This is a challenge with the close ended fund. This is a challenge with the close ended fund. 29.664. NAV 0. 20. D1 plus CG1 put together they have given. Divided by 26.6. Into 100. Give me the percentage. Sorry. 22.05% per annum directly because this was one year. This was one year per annum. No alternate answer. Last question I said per month or so much per year. This question is yearly data. 1 1 2014 till 31 12 2014. So this is one year return directly. This is one year return directly. It is not a new formula. Please be very, very clear. This is not a new formula. In fact, I don't want to even give a formula. My formula is what I get back minus what I invest. What I get back is 29.664. What I invest is 26.6. Along with that, I also get 2.8. Divide by what I invest 26.6 into 100. This is what the formula I would want you to remember and use it. Practically, logically, this is the formula. I can give different names to it. I can give different names. But this is what the formula is all about. Any doubts on this? Clear? I am purchasing from you. Mutual fund will not allow any entry exit at this stage. Mutual fund collected 500 crores. They will keep investing and selling that 500 crores. They will not give you anything in between and they will not take you anything back from you in between. So you want an exit, please sell it to your friend. He will buy, someone else will sell. Yeah, through the stock market. So, in the stock market, you will place a buy order. Somebody else will place a sell order. Matches, trade is closed. Because whenever you place a buy order or sell order, you will have to give a price in the stock market. So, you will give a price, place a buy order. Somebody else will give a price, place a sell order. Price matches, trade will happen. So, it has to be traded only. There is no option of going through the mutual fund. They will announce specific dates. The MF will say, I will allow an exit after 6 months, 12 months, 18 months. There can be specific dates or there can be a single date also. Saying that after 10 years, this fund is closed. I will give you back the money and close the fund. I have seen more of open-ended funds only. Close-ended, I have not seen much. Any doubts on this? I am not using price. I am using what I get back minus what I invest. What I get back is 29.664. What you get back is basically 29.664. You cannot get 28.8. You cannot technically get 28.8 because MF is not going to give you the money. So, what is going to come back is the price plus or minus the discount or plus or minus the premium. Any doubts on this? So, do not call it as price. I gave the heading as price, but that is the NAV for market. That is not price. That is the NAV for the market and NAV for the mutual fund. Any doubts on this? Clear? Okay. Now, I will take you through a next concept, which is on something called as dividend. A practical world, 
a mutual fund declares a dividend a mutual fund declares a dividend you had invested in this mutual fund you had invested in this mutual fund let's assume you have 10000 units it declared a dividend of 1 rupee rupees 10000 the dividend 1 rupee they'll give a percentage it has to be applied on face value dividend is always on face value whether it is share or mutual fund it is not on nav nav on this date is 25 nav is 25 so the mutual fund declared a dividend of 1 rupee 10000 into 1 10000 rupees dividend has been declared by the mutual fund nav is 25 on that date i the mutual fund gave me this 10000 and told me two option gave me two option what are the two option is dividend payment are technically called as payout if this happens, 10,000 will come to my bank account. 10,000 will come to my bank account if you opt for payout option. Second option is dividend reinvestment. What is reinvestment is this 10,000 instead of giving it to me, the MF is saying I'll reinvest in my portfolio and give you 10,000 by 25, 400 units. I will give you 400 units. They are not giving me any money. They are not giving me any money. So, one option is when you earn interest on FD, you can have a payout of the interest or you can say I want to add this to the FD balance. I want to add this to the FD balance. Similar is with mutual fund dividend. This concept is not there for share. Share and all no concept of reinvestment. So, whatever dividend is there, one option is I give you the money. I give you the money. You take the money and then it is done. Second option is you are not ready to take the money. You are not ready to take the money. So, in that scenario, what will happen is this 10,000, whatever is sitting, you tell the MF, you tell the MF, please reinvest in your scheme itself. So, it is like I got 10,000, I gave back 10,000, MF gave me 400 units. The MF paid me first 10,000, which is not going to happen. I paid back MF 10,000, which is also not going to happen. When I pay back 10,000, MF will give me 400 units. What will happen is only the last step. What will happen only is the last step. So, instead of paying dividend in rupees, I am going to pay dividend in units. I am going to give the dividend in the form of units. Your consideration can be in cash, can be in other than cash, can be in cash, can be in other than cash. When this happens, that formula which I gave you will not work. The formula which I gave you is not going to work because dividend is not paid out. Dividend is not paid out. What needs to be done, you will understand in a problem. But the formula is not going to work when the dividend is reinvested. When the dividend is reinvested because you told, take back. You told that, please take back the money. Don't give me any dividend. Don't give me any dividend. So, I have two choices. One choice is payout. Dividend payout versus dividend reinvestment. In a dividend payout plan, the investor will get dividend in rupees. And in case of dividend reinvestment, Dividend will get reinvested and we will get additional units. We will get additional units. If you have a payout scenario, please go ahead and complete the answer as per the original formula. What is the original formula? What you get back minus what you invest divided by what you invest into 12 by M into 100 or NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 divided by NAV0 into 12 by M into 100. For dividend reinvestment, for dividend reinvestment, I need some calculation to be done. What is that calculation? I'll explain in some time. I'll explain that in a question. Dividend, this is very critical, is to be always applied on face value. Dividend is always applied on face value. This will help us in calculating some reinvested units. If it's paid out, it is okay. But if it's reinvested, you need to know the overall dividend amount divided by the NAV to get the number of units. Clear? So I have two ways of paying dividend. One is payout plan. Second is reinvestment plan. When you create a fixed deposit, they'll give you two options. Interest payout, interest reinvested. Interest payout and interest reinvested. Try creating an FD, you will see these two options. Interest payout, you get the interest. Dividend payout, you get the dividend. Dividend reinvestment, interest reinvestment, interest is added to the principal value. Interest is added to the principal value. Dividend reinvestment, dividend is added to your original investment value. Is added to your original investment value and you get more units. You get more units. Any doubts on this? I'll wait for a minute. You can think and let me know if there are doubts.
Okay, Mr. X, an investor. Uh, let's come to this question. Question five. Mr. X, an investor, purchased 300 units of ABC mutual fund at the rate of 12.25 one year ago. Over the year, he received 1.25 as dividend, capital gain distribution of 1 rupee. You are required to find Mr. X holding period return. Holding period is no 12 by M. Assuming this no load fund has a NAV of 13 as on today. Assuming all the dividends and capital gain distributions are reinvested, are reinvested at an average price of 12.5. There are two parts to the question. Go through the problem and then I'll take you through. We'll, we'll see it. Okay, Mr. X purchased this 300 units uh, over the year. It had paid some dividend, capital gain, everything is there. Mr. X holding period, assuming that this no load fund, what is no load fund is there's something called as entry and exit load. Uh, SEBI has removed entry load as of now. There is no concept of entry load, but there will be exit load. What is entry load, exit load? We'll understand as we proceed because at this stage, I don't want to introduce it, but it has no implication on solving the question. Part 1, apply the formula and get me the answer. Because when dividend is not reinvested, normal formula, I am least bothered with whether you purchase 300 units or 1 unit or 2 unit. Whether it's 1 unit, same formula. 10 units, same formula. NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 divided by NAV0 into 100. Give me the answer to part 1. NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 divided by NAV0 into 100. In this question also holding period and annualized is going to be same. I think one year data. NAV1 minus NAV0 D1 CG1 by NAV0 into 100. NAV1 is How is NAV1? NAV0 D1 1.25 CG1 divided by NAV0 is 12.25 into 100. This is a simple calculation, nothing much to explain. I don't worry whether it is one share, one unit, 10 units, 100 units. Uh, the formula for when you do dividend reinvestment, I'll come to the formula for dividend reinvestment, which is exactly the same formula only, but you cannot use it this way. The formula is what I get back minus what I invest divided by what I invest into 100. But what I get back is not so simple. It's not a calculation which you can easily do. Because what will happen here is, if you bought 300 units, you'll be in the end having 350 units. In the end, you'll be having 350 units. So you cannot say NAV1 minus NAV0 is your profit. Because NAV1 is applied on 350 units. NAV0 will be applied on 300 units because you are getting extra units. You are getting extra units. So here I will have to do calculation for all the units. I will have to do calculation for all the units. Formula based approach is not going to work. NAV1 minus NAV0 is not going to work because NAV1 is for, I don't know the number of units. NAV0 also I don't know for the number of units. On top of that D1 and CG1 will not be paid. D1 and CG1 is not going to be 
paid. So the formula is what I get back minus what I invest divided by what I invest into 100. How do I write this? You will understand in some time. Now, the mutual fund had made a dividend payout of 1 and 1.25 which is broadly 2.25. Now, this dividend payout can happen at different dates. It could be that at the end of month 1, month 2, month 3, month 4, month 5, month 6, month 7. I don't know when it is paid. It's not necessary that it has to be paid only at the end of the year. Over the year, this payout has happened. So the reinvestment first month happened at 12 rupees, second month happened at 12.25, third month happened at 12.5, fourth month happened at 12.75. It can happen at different rates. On an average, it has happened at 12.5. On an average, it has happened at 12.5. That is the implication of that average price. The implication is when this reinvestment happened, it happened at different prices. It happened at different prices, starting with maybe 12 rupees, then 12.5, 13. 14, 10, 9, it could be different prices. For us, the reinvestment rate is 12.5. For us, the reinvestment rate. It could be that the question said the reinvestment happened on the last day. Then I would have taken 13 as the reinvestment NAV. I would have taken 13 as the reinvestment NAV. There, you will see all those problems later on. Okay. Clear any doubts on this? Let's start now. Computation of return of Dividend reinvestment plan. Return of dividend reinvestment plan. Particulars calculation amount. Point number one, amount invested. Amount invested. I will have to do calculation for all the units, not a single unit. Single unit approach will not work here. Amount invested. How many units did we buy? At what price? 12 point? Three six seven five is what you have invested. In the formula, what I get back minus what I invest is what I invest is three six seven five. What I invest is three six seven five. That is what I'm going to use in the formula. Point number two: dividend in rupees. Dividend in rupees. MF kept on paying dividends. MF kept on paying dividends. How much dividend did it give for one unit? Both added together. There is no difference between dividend and capital gain and all. How much? 2.25. So, I am eligible to get 2.25 into 300. I am eligible to get 2.25 into 300. That is what I should ideally get. I should get 2.25 into 300. 675 rupees should come to me. 675 should come to me. Now, what I am saying the MFS, I don't want 675. You give me dividend in units, don't give me rupees. Please give me units. Please give me units. I don't want rupees from you. I don't want rupees from you. Give me some extra units. Give me some extra units. I don't want dividend in rupees. I tell them very clearly saying that please don't give me dividend in rupees. Give me dividend in units. So what it does is 675 divided by what rate? So they give me this units. 54. So I purchased 300, but on the last day I'll have 354. I purchased 300, but on the last day I'm going to have 354 because I got extra units allotted. I got extra units. Maturity value. Maturity value is what you get back. What you invest is point number one. What you get back is maturity value. What you get back is maturity value. Maturity value is 354 units into 13 rupees. Closing NAV is 13. I'll be having 354 units of 13 rupees each. 354 units of 13 rupees each. 354 into 13. Now, formula you know, you can apply formula. What I invest? 
what I get back. Apply formula and tell me the return. Holding period return. What I get back is the last line. What I invest is the first line. Formula remains the same, but a slightly different way of calculating. Four six zero two minus three six seven five divided by four divided by three six seven five. That's all. No concept of dividend and all. Please don't bring any dividends and all because nothing came to you. You did not get any dividends. Dividends are not coming to you. You are getting back only one amount, which is four six zero two. Does that four six zero two include dividend? Yes, it includes fifty four units. It includes fifty four units. So the answer is. Minus three six seven five divided by three six seven five twenty five point two two. Any doubts on this? Some exam question will add another element which is not that logical. They'll ask which is better? Payout is better or reinvestment is better? Both are not comparable. Why they are not comparable? Because your payout would have happened in the month of Jan or Feb. The dividend would have been paid in the month of Jan or Feb. I don't know what did you do with that dividend. You could have earned some extra income out of that dividend also because the money was paid out to you. You would have invested it somewhere else and earned some returns out of it. I have no idea on that, and I don't want to get into it also. But I see a question will ask you which is better, whichever gives higher return. Please answer that. If they ask which is better, say in this question dividend reinvestment is better. Dividend reinvestment is better, but logically both are not comparable. Logically both are not. Comparable. Why they are not comparable is in one case I paid out the money. I don't know what did you do with that money. You could have invested somewhere. You could have invested somewhere and earned extra returns also. The return there could be even more. What was the return there? Twenty four point. Twenty four point. Okay, four nine. And here you have got twenty five point two two. So obviously this is better is what you will conclude. Now I want you to go to the next step, which is an MCQ, which can come in exam. Can you tell me why this twenty five point two two is more than, or when will this twenty five point two two be equal to the twenty four point? Or both will be same? When can both be same? Why is this higher? Why is this twenty five point two two higher? Okay, yeah, you come to the point. The reason is you made one investment here. And this is another investment you made. This is like an another investment made by you. This is like an another investment made by you. Two situations can happen. This twelve point five by the last day can go up. If it goes up, if it goes up, your dividend reinvestment returns are going to be more. For example, you reinvest. Let's assume at thirteen rupees. You reinvest at thirteen rupees. Closing is also thirteen. Closing is also. 13. You reinvested at 13. Both will give same return. Both are going to give you same return. Just to check, I put 13 here. 675 by 13. It is 51.92. So the value is 300 plus 51.92 into 13. Into 13, I get 24.49. I get 24.49. So if Your reinvestment NAV and closing NAV same, then both will give you same return. Both will give you same return. If in closing you are getting more, closing you are getting more. You can write this key conclusion: closing NAV greater than reinvestment NAV. This is this problem. Closing NAV greater than reinvestment NAV, which is what is happening in this problem. In this problem, closing NAV is greater than the Reinvestment NAV, reinvestment plan return greater than payout plan. Reinvestment plan return is going to be greater than payout plan. Dividend reinvestment will give you a higher return as compared to a payout. Reinvestment will give you higher return as compared to a payout. Exactly happening in this question. Exactly happening in this question. If you're closing NAV. If closing NAV is more than reinvestment, you should be happy about the reinvestment, and that is why reinvestment is giving higher return. That is why reinvestment is giving 
higher return because your closing NAV was more. You earned more. Closing NAV is equal to reinvestment NAV. Both are same. Equal, both will give you same return. Both are going to give you same return. Closing NAV is equal to reinvestment NAV. Both the plans are going to give you the same return. What I would want ICI to test is this rather than calculating this. That is of no use. If you can interpret these two and then give a conclusion, they can give a four line kind of a situation and they, finally they will say what will happen to the relationship between these two. An MCQ can get tested like that. And last situation is closing NAV is lesser than reinvestment. I am unhappy about reinvestment now. I am unhappy about reinvestment because closing NAV has crashed. I am thinking why did I do reinvestment? I am thinking always please get a logic for everything. Just giving an equation doesn't help me. Because I am giving you an uh, logic. Closing NAV is more than reinvestment NAV. I am happy about it. Happy means reinvestment return is more. Both are equal. I am indifferent. Closing NAV is le lesser. I am now worried. Why did I do reinvestment? Why did I do reinvestment? So answer is reinvestment plan return is lesser than payout plan. Reinvestment plan return is lesser than payout plan. What really matters is this rather than the calculation which I did. What will get tested in exam is what you have done the calculation most of the time. Most of the time, the calculation is what is going to be tested in exam. But what really matters is this calculation or this understanding. Uh, your reinvestments will happen because you have asked. Let me show a question. Reinvestment can happen at so many NAV prices. The reinvestment can happen at so many NAV prices, which we are going to see in the next question. The average of that reinvestment is called reinvestment NAV, the average price. You will understand this in question 7, that average price concept. Any doubts in this question? I will wait for a minute. Any doubts on the question or the relationship which I have given here? MF is among the easiest of the lot. You, you will not see me adding any new concepts and all. I am adding something saying that this is, I am explaining, but these are very, very simple things. It is not like your security valuation or bond valuation where we had so many extra things. Clear? Okay. Now, whenever I invest in a mutual fund, this is going to help me in solving this question, but not very critical. I could have explained with the problem also, but let me just first explain this. Whenever you invest in a mutual fund, they will give you options. What are the options? You see here growth. You see the heading growth. There's something called as IDCW. IDCW, this is dividend payout. This is related to your dividend part. I don't remember the full form of IDCW, but it is related to dividend. It is related to dividend. So the NAVs are going to be different for each of this. Just give me a minute. Earlier you saw an NAV was 136. This has an NAV of some 59. This has an NAV of some 59. The NAVs, it's the same. It's the same mutual fund. Everything is same. But there are different options available. What are the options available? Is practical world, two options is what they give, dividend and growth. But theoretically, we have three options. One is growth plan. Second is called bonus plan. Third is called dividend plan. Growth, bonus and dividend plan. Growth plan is the MF you invest today will neither pay you any dividends, will not give you any bonus. You pay today and your NAV will only keep going up. Your NAV will only keep going up. You saw the NAV was some 136. That was the growth NAV because it did not pay any dividend in between. It did not pay any dividend in between. You invest and it is not going to give you any dividends, no dividends at all. So in a growth plan, I invest 10,000, I'll get back 10,000. I invest 10,000 units. If I invest in 10,000 units, I'll get back 10,000 units. I'll get back 10,000 units and growth plan will have its own NAV. The growth plan will have its own NAV. Because practical world, I shown you two different NAVs for the same mutual fund. The same mutual fund has two different NAVs because it depends on the plan which you are selecting. Second is dividend. Dividend has two options. Dividend payout 
dividend reinvestment. I've explained you both. I've explained you both. Third is bonus plan. What is bonus plan is you invested 10,000. Suddenly 10 will become 20,000 because they gave a bonus of 1 is to 1. 20,000 will become 40,000. Again a bonus. 40,000 will become 50,000. Again a bonus. 50 will become 60. Again that will have a separate NEV. That will have a separate NEV. So we can have three types of plan. Growth plan where the units you invest and the units on the maturity is going to remain same. Dividend payout. Units you invest. Units on maturity is going to remain same. Payout means reinvestment units will go up 300 will become 354 300 is going to become 354 bonus also will have a change in units bonus will also have a change in units who should opt for growth plan let's understand that i should opt for a growth plan i have done mutual fund investment everything is growth for me i should invest in a growth plan if i don't need any interim money if i don't need any interim money if you are not in need of any money you should invest in a growth plan who should invest in a dividend plan if you need regular money? If you need regular money. I really don't understand why this dividend reinvestment is there. Because dividend reinvestment is nothing but like a growth plan. Dividend reinvestment is nothing but like a growth plan. In fact, I for my interest, I did some calculation of dividend reinvestment versus growth plan. The returns were same. The returns were same. So logically, I don't even understand why dividend reinvestment is there. In fact, I have asked this question to multiple people. Nobody could give me a logical answer as to why dividend reinvestment exists. Because in dividend reinvestment, what you are doing is you are telling them don't pay me dividends. You are telling them don't pay me dividends. I'll reinvest the dividend. The only angle is if at all some tax side issues are there, but that also I could not get a logic. So in dividend reinvestment, you don't give me dividend, you give me units. For that matter, let me not even get the dividend itself. Let me go through a growth plan. Let me go through a growth plan because dividend reinvestment means 354 into 13. Growth plan would have been 300 into 14 rupees. It would have been 14, 14.5, 15, some number, some random number it would be. But the growth plan here has an NAV of 136 lesser units into 136 or more units into 59 both are same whether you do lesser units into 136 or more units into 59 technically both are going to be same bonus i don't even understand the purpose bonus there's zero purpose of it because in bonus what is going to happen just that the units are going to multiply what happens in mutual fund is value of unit is equal to asset minus liability divided by the number of units so earlier you will say 1 lakh divided by 1000 units 100 rupees and you are holding 20 units later on you will say 1 lakh divided by 2000 units you will double it will become 50 you had 20 units now you will have 40 units i don't even understand what is the difference earlier you are holding 100 units now you are holding sorry earlier you are holding 20 units now you are holding 40 units the value is anyway going to remain same so bonus plan in fact in that option you did not find a bonus plan because bonus is not that much in the practical world but for problem solving you may see a bonus plan and the other two option i said is one is growth and second is dividend payout dividend reinvestment dividend payout dividends will be continuously paid out which is good if you are a person who is seeking regular dividend income if you are a person who is seeking regular dividend income because i am going to retire and post retirement i want regular dividend income please go for dividend plan go for dividend plan you don't want any money Please go for growth plan. Please go for the growth plan where you don't need any interim money. Any doubts on the three plans? Growth, dividend, bonus. 20 and 40. Ignore the calculations. Let's just understand. So 100 is the NAV and 50 is the NAV in this example. 20 and 40 are the number of units. So don't worry about the calculation which I've done. See, focus should not be on the numbers. Focus should be on understanding the logic. So bonus plan basically is not going to alter anything. Bonus is not going to make any alteration in my net worth or in my valuation. Because earlier I was having lesser units, the NAV was higher. Now I have more units, NAV is lesser. So net net I have the same value. Net net I am going to have the same value. Any doubts in these three terms? Let's see this in a question. Go through seven first. Take your time. It will take you some time to read the...
ओके सन मून म्यूचुअल फंड स्पॉन्सर्ड ओपन एंडेड इक्विटी ओरिएंटेड स्कीम ओपन एंडेड मींस एनी टाइम एंट्री इज पॉसिबल एग्जिट इज पॉसिबल चाणक्य ऑपर्चुनिटी फंड थ्री प्लांट्स डिविडेंड री इन्वेस्टमेंट बोनस एंड ग्रोथ आइडियली ऑल द थ्री शुड गिव सिमिलर रिटर्न सम अप एंड डाउन कैन हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ सम वेरिएशंस एट द टाइम ऑफ इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफर ऑन 1499 मिस्टर आनंद मिस्टर बच्चन एंड मिसेस चारू इन्वेस्टेड ऑफ 1 लाख ईच एंड चोसन बी सी एंड ए प्लांट रेस्पेक्टिवली For an IPO, for an IPO, initial fund offer we call initial public offer or initial fund offer or new fund offer. The NAV or the issue price will be equal to face value if the problem is silent. The issue price is going to be equal to face value. That is, everybody would have got one lakh by ten. Everybody would have got one lakh divided by ten. The issue price will be equal to the face value. Then the NAV kept on changing. I invested on one four ninety nine NAV. Kept on changing. They have given the numbers. The plan A is dividend reinvestment. So when you are evaluating dividend reinvestment, you will look at NAV of plan A. Dividend plan B is bonus, which has a different NAV, and plan C is growth, which has a different NAV. Every plan has different NAVs, and I have shown you the practical rule why it varies also. On 31st July, all three people redeemed their units. Calculate the annual rate of return to each of the investor. LTCG is exempt. STCG is subject to 10% income tax. Securities transaction tax is there on sale and redemption. Ignore education says. Now, three different plans have been asked in the question. One is a growth plan, second is a bonus plan, and third is a dividend reinvestment plan. For all the three, I'll have to calculate return. Bonus plan NAV1 minus NAV0 formula is not going to work. That is NAV1 minus NAV0 plus D1 plus CG1 formula will not work. Reason is when you start, you start at 10,000. You will end at more units. You will end at More units. So for bonus as well as for dividend reinvestment, that formula is not going to work. Which formula will work? What I get back minus what I invest divided by what I invest into 12 by m into 100. That is the formula we are going to use. For growth plan, that formula can work. For growth plan, that formula can work. But I have another challenge, which is income tax, which is income tax. So I have to factor in this income tax in my calculation and some securities transaction tax. So I cannot use that formula. That formula is without any Expenses without any extra expenses. Then what formula will be used for all the three? I'm going to use a formula which is what I get back minus what I invest. What I get back is sale value minus long term capital gain tax minus short term capital gain tax. Whatever it is, if there is a tax on that minus your uh, secure sorry uh, securities transaction tax, all that you subtract. That is is that is called what you get back minus what you invest is the return you get. Then convert that into percentage. I'm going to first start with the growth plan, which is the easiest. I'm directly going to do the calculation for a growth plan. So, who has invested in growth plan here? Not Anand. Mr. Bachchan. Mr. Bachchan has invested in growth plan. Plan C. Plan C is the growth plan. Let's calculate the return of Mr. Bachchan first, and then I'll proceed to the returns of the other people. Growth plan will be quicker to do. Then we'll start doing the others. Working note one. Computation of Returns of Mr. Bachchan in bracket growth plan. Particular calculation amount. Growth plan, which is plan C. Growth plan is plan C. No calculation. Nothing needs to be done. Directly, we are going to write point number one. Sale value on maturity. Sale value on maturity. How many units did I get when I invested? One lakh divided by ten. One lakh divided by ten. Some question can give you an NAV or issue price. Okay, if they give you that, please follow that as the opening price. So I have invested in ten thousand units. I get back ten thousand into what price? Eighty-two point zero seven. Plan C NAV. Plan C NAV. Eighty-two point zero seven. Plan C NAV. Less. 
security transaction tax at on sale you will have to pay securities transaction tax stt at what is the rate 0.2% subtract stt One six four one gone. Securities transaction tax needs to be paid by us. Point two percent gone. Eight twenty seven hundred into point two percent. I need to pay this. Clear. Then. Less STCG tax. You can also have LTCG tax in the current regime. Earlier long term capital gains were exempt. ICI can ask a question where LTCG can also come into picture. How to calculate the tax? I'll explain in the next scenario when I do STCG tax. What is the time period for a short term capital asset for mutual fund in taxation? You will have to tell me. I have no idea. Twelve months. So, did you buy any units in the last twelve months? In this case, did Mr. Bachchan buy any units in the last twelve months? That is from thirty first July two thousand nine. Anything did he buy from thirty first July two thousand eight till thirty first July two thousand nine? He bought only once. When did he buy? He bought on one four ninety nine. He bought on one four. 99 he did not buy anything after that so there is no short term capital gain long term capital gain is there but it is exempt long term capital gain is exempt no short term capital gain how will you get units in the last 12 months if some reinvestment happens or if some bonus happens then only you will get units so i'll see that in the bonus plan and reinvestment plan so i did not get any units no short term capital gain no short term capital gain because i did not get any units in the last 12 months That is from 2008 July till 2009 July. This is as per your Income Tax Act. I did not get any units. So net realization. This is in short what I get back. There is no long term capital gain tax. No here. STCG is also zero for this guy. So that's why I wrote zero. I wrote zero because I'm not going to write LTCG tax because LTCG is not there. In my see, this STCG tax will come for the other two people. LTCG tax is not going to be there for all the three because LTCG is exempt. Short term capital gain is not there for this person. No short term capital gain for this person. Clear. So what I get back is eight nineteen zero five nine. Now imagine the formula. What I get back minus what I invest. What I get back minus what I invest. Less amount invested. Less amount invested. What is the amount we invested? This is the numerator. This is the numerator. Once you subtract this, that is the numerator. I can call this as return in rupees. Return in rupees. That is what you get back minus what you invest is the absolute amount of return you got. What you get back minus what you invest is the return you earned from the mutual fund, which is some. Seven lakh nineteen thousand. If you divide by amount invested, if you divide by amount invested, you will get return in percentage. You will get the return in percentage moment you divide by the amount invested. In that, if you do into twelve by m, you get the annual return. Without twelve by m, that is called holding period return. That is called holding period return. Point number seven. Return. In percentage in bracket holding period, I am not bringing time as of now into picture. 
I'm not bringing time as of now into picture. I'm just going to divide by the amount invested. I'm just going to divide by the amount invested. What is the amount invested? One lakh into hundred. So I'm earning some seven nineteen point zero six percent. I'm earning seven hundred and nineteen point zero six percentage. I invested one lakh. In that, I'm earning seven times. I'm earning seven times, which is seven nineteen point. 06% return in percentages return in rupees 719059 divided by 1 lakh why divided by 1 lakh what i get back minus what i invest divided by what i invest divided by what i invest any doubts on this now this number is not understandable at all because 719 is not a number which anyone is going to understand so you'll have to convert this into annual return and that is what the question had asked Compute the annual rate of return. Compute the annual rate of return. Listen, the formula was seven nineteen zero five nine. What I get back minus one lakh divided by one lakh into hundred. I do in this. If I do into twelve by m, if I do into twelve by m, I'll end up getting something called as annual return. Can you tell me how many months is the investment starting from day one till now? How many months is the investment period? Investment period. Please calculate correctly and tell me how many months was the investment? Tell me the investment period from one four ninety nine till thirty one July two thousand nine. Not, not one twenty three. Not one one five. Guys, it's one twenty-four. If you make mistakes in this, I cannot help it. These and all areas, you cannot make mistake. You started on one four ninety-nine, so April, May, June, July, which is four months. After that, another ten years. After that, another ten years, which is one twenty-four. Making errors in this are not acceptable at all. One, I had similar issue. I had shown in one more problem in bond valuation. Answer was nine years. You told me eight years. These errors, nobody can correct it. And these errors are going to cost you big time in exam because a small error like this, I say, will deduct half marks for this. If it's a ten mark question, you'll end up getting only five marks because your final answer is not going to match. Your final answer is not going to match. So it is one twenty four months, April, May, June, July, first four months, and then another ten years, another exactly ten years. So one twenty four months is the time period of investment. So investment period one four ninety nine to. Thirty-one seven, two thousand nine, one twenty-four months, one twenty-four months. Some of you said one twenty-three, one fifteen. All that is not acceptable, guys. No errors in this. No errors in this. Annual rate of return. Annual rate of return. Annual rate of return. Which is I can give a formula, but logic is one twenty four months is equal to seven nineteen point zero six. What is twelve month return? That is why you do into twelve by m. You do into twelve by m. That's the logic. In one hundred and twenty four months, you are earning seven nineteen percentage. In twelve months, how much you learn? In twelve months, what is the annual return you are earning? Sixty nine This is the annual rate of return. This is the annual rate of return. This calculation ignores something called as time value of money. Ignores something called as time value of money. If you want to calculate the real return, which is what any MF will be showing, only the IRR. So in this question, if you do IRR calculation, if you do IRR calculation, that is year cash flow, PVF, DCF, year zero, one lakh outflow. 124 is technically 10.33, which you cannot do in your uh, notebook, but in Excel I can do 10.33, which is some 8 lakh 19,059. If you do IRR for this, that is called the real return. That is called the real return. ICI did IRR for one question. They gave both answer. They gave both answer. When the number of years is a whole number, you can attempt IRR. When the number of years is a Whole number you can attempt IRR. Otherwise, you cannot do 10.33. Calculator is not going to help. Calculator will not be in a position to handle 124 months calculation. So IRR is there. That is a homework question which you will see at home. Basic calculation is going to remain same. 
Additionally, you will do IRR calculation. For IRR, you need year cash flow, TVF and DCF. Any doubts on this? Clear? Working note 2. Dividend reinvestment plan. Who has invested in dividend reinvestment? Okay, computation of return of Ms. Charu. Dividend reinvestment. This is the plan which will take maximum time in calculation. Dividend reinvestment. Which plan is dividend reinvestment? Okay, plan A. Dividend reinvestment, plan A. Now, for dividend reinvestment, for dividend reinvestment, I cannot straight away do, I am going to exactly do the same nine things. But, I cannot write it directly because I don't know the units on maturity. I don't know the units on maturity. If you tell me the units on maturity, I will put it this way and get complete the solution. I will put it this way and complete the solution if you give me units on maturity. But units on maturity is not there. Note 1. Computation of units on maturity. Because units will increase. Units on maturity. I may need some 5, 6 columns. So, manage space accordingly. Date. Opening units. Date opening units. Dividend in rupees. Dividend in rupees. Reinvestment NAV. I'll need 5 6 columns. Reinvestment NAV. Dividend in units. Closing units. Date opening units. Dividend in rupees, dividend reinvestment NAV. I'll explain each of this as we do a question. Opening units, dividend in rupees, reinvestment NAV, dividend in units, closing units. When was the first date dividend is paid? 28, 7, 7. Write the date 28 7 2003. 28 7 2003. I'll work with two decimals. How many units did I have on this day? On 28 7 to 10,000, which was allotted to me on day 0. 10,000 is what I had. What is the dividend rate declared by the mutual fund on this day? So listen 10,000 into face value into 20 percent into face value dividend is always on face value into face value into 20 percent now i'm telling the mutual fund don't give me this twenty thousand and dollars don't give me this twenty thousand on this day what is the nav of this plan 58.4 where is 58.42 30.70. On this day, the NAV is 30.70. So, I will reinvest this 20,000 at this NAV. I will reinvest this 20,000 at this NAV and get some units. Get some units. So, units allotted is 20,000. 651.47. And now, closing has gone up from 10,000 to 10,651. From 10,000, it has gone up to 10,651. I got originally 10,000 units. I got paid dividend of 20,000 rupees. I told them, don't give me 20,000. Don't give me 20,000. So, they said, okay, I'll divide by 30.7 and give you the units. When is the next date of dividend payment? 31.3, 2004. Now, I have 10,651 units. Now I have 10,651 units. Because my units have gone up. My units have... This is the exact calculation I did in that problem also. Exactly this only we were doing. There was only one dividend and one reinvestment. Here multiple are there. 10,651. How much dividend MF has declared? Into 10 into 70%. Into 10, 10 rupees into face value. Always on face value. 
into 70 percent into 10 10 651 into 10 rupees into 70 percent 10 651 into 10 rupees into 70 percentage 74 560 what is the nav on this date 58.42 Again, I am telling them, don't give me money, give me units. Don't give me money, please give me units. So, I get how many units now? 1276.28 and closing increases. Closing is increasing to 11,000. 11,927.75. The closing units has gone up. Eleven nine twenty seven point seven five. Next date for dividend payment. Thirty one ten. The only difficulty is this: you'll have to do so much calculation. How much is the dividend? Into ten into forty percent. Into ten into forty percent. NAV. Quickly complete this calculation. Please take the NAV of that mutual fund. Don't end up taking some other plan. I'll end with 14,906 units. I'll be ending with 1490. Extreme amount of concentration would be needed. You rush through the solution, end up making an error in exam. 14,906.16. In class, you can copy it if you want. But in exam, you will have to take your time and do proper calculation. I don't spend time on much on the calculation front. 14,906.16 is what I will end up having on the last day. Fourteen nine zero six point one six. I would suggest you to copy these numbers in case you are yet to complete it because calculation I want to spend that much time now. Once you understand the first two computation balance is a formality. Important two three points one it has to be on face value. Second there will be an NAV for that plan. You don't take the NAV of plan B or C suddenly end up taking the NAV for the respective plan. And closing units will increase so that further dividend, the dividend amount kept on going up because the units kept on increasing. The units kept on increasing. You will see changes in the dividend amount. Assuming an exam question gives you this directly, then it is like the earlier table. That's all. It is like the earlier table. I don't have anything to do. Any doubts on 14906.16? I don't want to spend time on calculation. So if you have not done, please quickly copy it. 14906.16. At your end, it may take you more time. In Excel, I do it a little faster. Any doubts on this? Can you proceed? Now, next computation of return. Note to computation of return. Note to computation of return. I'm going to exactly do the same thing. Exactly do the same thing. No changes at all. Same nine line items we are going to write. 
sale value on maturity, securities transaction tax, STCG tax, net realization, amount invested, return in rupees, return in percentage, investment period, annual rate of return. Write the format and keep it ready so that your focus will be more on understanding later rather than copying it. So just write the format. It's exactly the same thing I did for growth plan. I did not do this for reinvestment directly because I had to do some base computation. And exactly the same thing we are going to do in a bonus plan also. Exact same thing in a bonus plan as well. Okay, I'll get into the calculation now. Exact same thing we're going to do. Now it is 14,906 units you will sell. 14,906 units. Earlier you were selling 10,000 units. And this has a different NAV. What is the NAV for this plan? If you see the final value, it will be almost closer, not exactly same. But you will see values being closer. In the growth plan and this plan, the value has to be closer. 791. There it was 820. There it was 820. Here it is 7 lakh 91. 53 point. Sorry, sorry, 53.75. So then almost become more closer. 8 lakh 1000 vis a vis 8 lakh 20,000. 8 lakh 1000 vis a vis 8 lakh 20,000. Pay 0.2%. 0.2%, 1602, 0.2% needs to be paid. Now listen my question carefully and tell me, any units got allotted in the last one year? This allotment, this allotment happened in the last one year. This can have short term capital gain. This units got allotted in the last one year. There can be a short term capital gain or capital loss i don't know i'll check the calculation but there is a possibility of a capital gain so listen stcg tax is 10 percent into how many units got allotted in this day one one now if question says ltcg is taxable you need to do this calculation for every in every allotment you will have to do this calculation for every allotment because short term capital gain alone is taxable so i'm just looking at this into these units are sold at selling price of 53.75 listen for a minute sold at selling price of 53.75 and they were purchased they were purchased at 48.10 they were purchased at 48.10. STT is not allowed as a tax deductible expense for capital gain calculation. Selling price is 53.75. Cost price is 48.1. The gap is the short term capital gain. On the short term capital gain, 10% you will have to pay. 10%. If LTCG becomes taxable, you will have to do then do 702.85 into selling price is 53.75. Cost price is 46.45. Get the value which I expect ICI not to test because that becomes more of taxation area rather than your FM area. So here you are having only one scenario where only LTCG is, sorry, STCG is taxable. So in the last one year, there was one allotment. There was one allotment, which is 10% into the number of units is 1144. You got 
allotted this at 48.10. Many students has a doubt that why 48.10, why not 0? Because we are not paying anything. So you are technically not paying anything, but under income tax also it is basically whatever is the rate of reinvestment that is taken as the cost of acquisition because otherwise dividends would have come. Otherwise dividends would have come. So this 1144 is not free units for you. This 1144 is not free units. You have paid a price for this. What is the price you have paid? You have paid 48.1. The gap is the short term capital gain. Let me know the this number finally. Sorry. 646 point. Okay, 647. Let me give it a 647. STCG is not allowed as a deduction, okay? Because some students had that doubt also. Short term capital gain, sorry, securities transaction tax, can I deduct in that 53.75? I think not allowed. It is not allowed as a deduction. That is what your capital gain says, no? You guys remember securities transaction tax. You'll have to tell me, I don't remember tax, guys. Allowed, not allowed. Allowed. STD allowed or not allowed? I don't know. I'm, you will have to tell me. My sense was it is not allowed. If changes have happened, I don't know. So you guys check and then let me know in the next class. Securities transaction tax. I think it's not allowed. That is what I remember. But in case you want to check, please check it. Okay. Net realization. Beyond this, the problem is over. At least this part is over. Bonus plan, I'll do it in the next class. What I get back is this amount. What I get back is this amount. What you invested was 1 lakh. 1 lakh. Return in rupees is 698,957. 698,957. Percentages divide by 1 lakh. 698.96%. Holding period is 124 months. Same logic. This into 12 by 124. Ideally, all the three would give similar answer. Taxation can have some impact. And some, the question may not be properly framed. Otherwise, the NAVs also should not have variation. The NAVs should ultimately lead to similar value. Some deviation obviously can be there, but not much deviation. Bonus plan is something I'm going to do in the next session. I'm at two because it is going to take me some 10 minutes of discussion. So I do that in the next class. Any doubts till now in mutual fund? This will be among the easiest of the lot. Whatever chapters we are going to do, among that it is the easiest. Any doubts, let me know, else we end the session.